as clouds start to form around the dome. In this haunted house, some won't feel at home wearing their masks and ready to fight. The Bengals hope the Lions are not ready to bite. Today, the Bengals seek four wins in seven games, while the Lions hope to exercise their early season shame. A treat for the Bengals, one of the best to run. A trick for the Lions will be win number one. The players are ready, some quite mean. Get ready for football. It's Halloween. From the Pontiac Silverdome, 45 minutes from downtown Detroit, it's the Detroit Lions and the Cincinnati Bengals coming up, the kickoff here on CBS. So. Subway presents Fresh Starts, a salute to the game's early season surprises. Subway, eat fresh. Head coach Dick Jerron's Bears are atop the NFC Central after Anthony Thomas set a Bears rookie rushing record with 188 yards in a 24-0 win over the Bengals in Week 6. The Steelers are in first place in the AFC Central thanks to their running back Jerome Bettis, who rushed for over 100 yards in his fourth straight game, a 17-10 victory over the Buccaneers. When it comes to food, a lot of places have silly ideas to bring you in. Whoa. But once you get to the taste, where's the fresh? Hey, Clucky, ah. want something made fresh? Uh-huh. Come on. Try one of the new Subway Selects made on fresh-baked gourmet bread. Susie? Right, Tim. Subway's got four new Subway Selects, like the delicious horseradish steak and cheese, all on fresh-baked gourmet bread and all made fresh right in front of you. Whoa, check out that check. Subway Just fresh. kidding. <laughs> Welcome back to Pontiac. The AFC Central standing, Cincinnati in the hunt. However, they lost to Chicago last week, 24 to nothing. The Bengals have won the toss and have elected to receive the football. And the series note, last time these two teams met back in 1998, Corey Sawyer returned a Scott Mitchell pass, 58 yards for a touchdown in overtime to give Cincinnati a 34-28 win. So the Lions ready to send it away. Jason Hansen, two-time Pro Bowler, set to kick off to Curtis Keaton, who's averaging 22 yards per return. And we're underway from Pontiac. Here's Keaton from the five-yard line. Loses it, picks it up, and Keaton goes down at the three. Ruben Jones with the special teams tackle for Detroit. Opening kickoff, look it into your bread basket. Don't take your eyes off and look at the wedge yet. You don't want to do that on the road. Backed up inside the five. That's the last place you want to start as a Bengals offensive player here on this in this Silverdome that can get real loud with momentum. So John Kitna, his numbers last week, 244 yards. Brent, he led the Bengals inside the red zone twice, but didn't score. And that's been a big problem for both these teams. They've moved the ball a little bit, but they haven't come up with points inside the red area. First down and 10 from the four. They hand it off early. Here's Corey Dillon running. And watch out! Dillon from the four. Can he make it? Corey Dillon. Touchdown Cincinnati, 96 yards. Holy mackerel. Well, that'll quiet these fans awful quick. And the amazing thing about that, Gus, is the Detroit Lions know that the Bengals are going to run. They've said it. Everybody knows it. And here it comes. You're back up. You have a chance to get a big play. And, and Corey Dillon goes 96 on the first play. That'll take the steam out of your engine. As we mentioned, this Bengals team much improved from last season. Corey Dillon held to only 30 yards last week against the Bears at home. It gets off to a tremendous start on the first play of the game. So Corey Dillon running the football as if he were shot out of a cannon. And the Bengals take a 7 0 lead. Corey Dillon coming up with the longest run in Bengals history, 96 yards. And Cincinnati takes a 7 0 lead over Detroit. 
When you play against Corey Dillon, you've got to be ready for that cutback because he can, he's got speed, he's got strength, he's got that versatility, and he can cut back. You've got to play tough on the back side. You've got to be going full speed the whole time. Desmond Howard is a man that can return one as well. He's back deep for Detroit. This one angled toward the corner, picked up inside the five. Howard up the sideline. Gets up to the 30, make it the 31. A return of 30 yards. But Corey Dillon, unbelievable first play of the game. And guys, a couple things. Watch this backside. Richmond Webb versus Tracy Scroggins. You gotta keep fighting. Don't let yourself get blocked. Another you're gonna watch Darnay Scott come into the screen versus Lamar Campbell, the safety coming up. Watch this block. Bang! And there's the hole. And it's off to the races for Corey Dillon. And if you wonder about Corey Dillon's speed, there's Terry Fair, a cornerback. Never close the gap. Corey Dillon run right by him. First down and 10 for, from the 31 for the Lions. Charlie Batch throwing on first down. Looks underneath. Finds Corey Schlesinger. And Schlesinger gets to the 37. Charlie Batch, another 300-yard game last week against Tennessee. And Batch became only the second Lions player in history to throw for 300 yards in consecutive games. Scott Mitchell did it in 95. And you know what? Scott Mitchell's on the field today. Backup quarterback for the Bengals. And I really like Charlie Batch these last couple weeks. You can see the offense is starting to come together for him. It's a learning offense. Got this West Coast offense. It's a lot to know. Schlesinger running, looking for the first down. Crosses the 40, and the pile pushes him to the 42. Spikes with the tackle. So the Lions have the number three passing offense in the National Football League, ranked eighth overall up front. Back is simple, Beverly, Stye, and Joyce. Backs and receivers, James Stewart out of the lineup today because of an ankle injury, replaced by Lamont Warren, Schlesinger, Morton, Foster, and David Sloan, the Pro Bowl tight end. Your former coach, Marty Morningway. Got to spend a year with Marty in San Francisco, and nobody knows his West Coast offense as well as him. He's got to study under Mike Holmgren in Green Bay and Mary Uchi in San Francisco. Quick throw. Schlesinger up the sideline, gets close to midfield. As a matter of fact, he's inside Cincinnati territory. The Cincinnati defense allowed the Bears running back Anthony Thomas to rush for 188 yards last week. Booker, Gibson, Whittington, and Justin Smith, the first-round pick out of Missouri. The linebackers, Takeo Spikes, is one of the best, Simmons and Foley. And in the secondary, the Lions want to attack him. Mark Roman at one corner, Artrell Hawkins with Corey Hall, and Armour at safety. And Dick LeBeau, a former Detroit Lions standout, played 171 consecutive games for the Lions, had 62 career interceptions. Second down and one from the 48. And they run it, getting to the 45. This is Lamont Warren, as we mentioned, in for James Stewart today. And you're familiar with this guy, aren't you? Matt Millen. Yeah, we can't even get him to get down on the field. I was down there before the game looking for him, president, CEO, and would love to have him come by the booth and get five minutes on the air with us, but uh, He's pretty involved in the game. They're looking for that first big W, and I know he's uh, very emotional, very into this process. 0-5, the Detroit Lions. First down and 10 from the 45-yard line. Johnny Morton, the motion man. Lamont Ward in the backfield, play action. Batch setting up, looking, turns it up. Batch still running. Batch with running room, slides down. It's an 11-yard gain for Charlie Batch. And talk about running for your life. Because this is part of the maturity process. Charlie Batch goes through his progression. You're going to watch him look to the right, come back, look left. Doesn't see anybody. Step up in the pocket. See if he can make a play again. Realizes his receivers still aren't there. And make something happen with your legs. And, you know, he can run the ball better than a lot of quarterbacks. He just doesn't do it at all, very often. First down and 10 for the Lions. First offensive drive of the game. The sixth play started at the 31. And they hand it to Warren, who's trapped down from behind at the 30. All right, the standings in the NFC Central. Obviously, the Lions at the bottom of the pack. The much improved Chicago Bears 4-1 taking on your former team, the 49ers, today. Yeah, and they've surprised a lot of people, especially the Bengals last week, 24 to nothing. And so this Detroit Lions team saw what the Bears did to the Bengals. They think, hey, maybe we can do some of the same things. That Bears offensive line playing extremely well this year. Second down and eight from the Cincinnati 31. And this is the way to respond to that kind of drive. Here's Batch setting up a screen intercepted. Smith, Justin Smith still running. And Smith is down at the Lions 45. 
A comedy of errors for the Lions to start this game. And Gus, unfortunately for this Lions team, that's personified their season thus far. Falling asleep on the defensive side of the ball, giving up a 96-yard touchdown run. And Charlie Batch with a wide-open screen play coming up. And you see him throw it right into the hands of Justin Smith. He's got to get some air on that ball. So the Bengals are in good shape once again, courtesy of Justin Smith. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Subway, fresh-made sandwiches on fresh-baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. And by Jeep, makers of Grand Cherokee, Wrangler, and the all-new Jeep Liberty. First down and 10 for Cincy at the 43. Corey Dillon around the right side. Doesn't pick up very many. Chased out of bounds by Allen Aldridge. And that 96-yard run, the longest in Bengals history. Prior to that, the longest came in 1968 when Paul Robinson dashed 87 yards for a touchdown against Oakland. He is now, with that one run, the second all-time leader in rushing for the Bengals in only five seasons. Second down and 10 from the 43. Here's Kitten at a pass, first of the game, setting up a screen, and he's sacked at the 40-yard line, Allen Aldridge. And Gus, Alan Aldridge is going to get the credit for that sack. But Robert Porsche and Chris Claiborne covered Corey Dillon. They feel him coming out there on the screen, and there's no one for John Kitney to throw to. Here comes Aldridge, and he's got a pure shot at John Kitna. Great read there by the Lions defense, and they've got to do something great because that first play of the game was ugly. A loss of 16. Third down, 26 from the 41. Dillon. The deep back, Lorenzo Neal, the up back. Here's Corey Dillon over the right side, cuts it back and gets close to midfield. Robert Porsche, who's playing with the tender right ankle with the tackle. Gain of seven. And let's go back up to that interception earlier. You see Judson Smith get knocked down, but he bounces right up. Great effort. First interception in the first round draft picks career. And they're trying to strip the ball from him. Defensive linemen aren't used to hanging on to the ball there, but he does a pretty nice job of it. Going against Jeff Backus there to the left half of the Detroit Lions. Two first-rounders battling each other today. As a matter of fact, Smith had no interceptions in three years at Missouri. So Nick Harris in the punt. Gets it away. Wobbly kick. Desmond Howard back deep. Fair caught at the 14-yard line. A 37-yard punt. So with nine minutes to go here in the first quarter of play, Charlie Batch has got to get it going. Seven to nothing Cincinnati. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter of play. And look at this, Brent. This season in the first quarter. So neither team had scored a touchdown in the first quarter coming into today's game, Gus. That included Corey Dillon's 96-yard run. First down and 10 from the 14. They hand it off. Warren, jitterbugging, gets close to the 20. Steve Foley with the tackle. So coming into today, the problem areas for the Lions. And you know, they've, they've been throwing the ball an awful lot, so you're going to have more sacks. Penalty yards is a concern. That's about discipline. Turnover ratio where you're throwing the ball more, but points allowed, that's the key. They need the defense to step up and start stopping some people here in Detroit. Second down and six from the 18. Batch sprinting out, throwing on the run. It's caught. Barry Foster turns it upfield and gets a first down. Foster in his second year from LSU, seventh catch of the season, gains 10 yards. Artrell Hawkins defensively for the Bengals. And when we talked to the Lions yesterday, they felt like this, these defensive backs of the Cincinnati Bengals were pretty aggressive. They took some chances, and what that translates to is some double moves. You're going to see some out and ups with maybe Charlie Batch pumping once or a slant and go. Look for Johnny Morton at the bottom versus Artrell Hawkins. That's the matchup they really like. First and 10 from the 28. Lamont Warren once again gets to the 30, and Warren is an interesting player. Started his career after coming out of Colorado with Indianapolis, was waived, went to New England, played one season there, but last season, after being waived by the Patriots, didn't play in the National Football League. 
now he's with Detroit in the starting lineup today. I think one of his assets is he's able to catch the ball coming out of the backfield. That's very positive in this West Coast offense because everybody gets a chance to get the ball. We've seen Corey Schlesinger get a few catches and a, and a couple touches here early in the first quarter. Second and eight from the 30. Here's back to pump. Knocked away. Loose. And Cincinnati has it again. Brian Simmons knocking it away. And Reynard Wilson with the recovery. Second turnover of the day for the Lions. And Gus, we talked about the double move and the pump fake. The key is, though, you've got to be able to pass protect because if you're going to pump fake, you need more time. Watch Charlie go back. He's going to look, pump that slant to Johnny Morton. Then he gets ready to cock the arm back. And here comes Brian Simmons slapping the ball out. You've got to be able to block it, especially when you know you've got a double move route coming. You see Simmons coming in off the left end, and nobody's there to grab him. First down and 10 for the Bengals from the 22. Dylan the lone setback. Here's Dylan over the left side. Dylan slices in, gets to the 16. Sean Rogers with the tackle. So John Skitna, the starting quarterback for this Cincinnati team, and his job today just don't give it away and I talked to Kenny Anderson the quarterback coach for the Bengals famous quarterback in the league and he said John Kitten is actually a lot better than his numbers say he's done a great job managing the team being a leader a stand-up guy for this offense second down and five from the 17 Dylan again bounces it outside tries to cut it back and is down at the 18 so offensively for the Bengals the line that sprung Corey Dillon for 96 Webb, O'Dwyer, Brom, Goff, and Willie Anderson. The backs and receivers, Corey Dillon, second all-time in Cincinnati history. Neil, great blocker, Scott and Warwick are the receivers with Tony McGee, the veteran at tight end. Ken Anderson, a great Bengal in his day. He's the quarterback's coach, former offensive coordinator here. Third down, six from the 18. They need to go to the 12 for first down. Kitna out of the shotgun. Kitna under pressure, throws, it's caught. Flag on the play. Reception made by Ron Dugans. And he gets the first down, but let's see. Holding against Cincinnati will be the call. And I think they were getting a hold of Tracy Scroggins there, number 97 for the Lions. He's a little frustrated about getting held coming around the corner versus Richmond Webb. Holding, number 73, offense. Still third down. There's Scroggins versus Webb out here on the outside. Watch, watch right here. Here comes Richmond Webb get, making contact. You got to move those feet, big man. And once he gets that corner, once Scroggins gets his shoulder beyond Webb's, it's all over. All you can do as an offensive lineman is hold on. If you get that hand up there, the refs are going to call it every time. So instead of six yards, they need 17. Third down and 17 from the 29. They need to go to the 12 for first down. Three receiver package. Kitna out of the shotgun. Underneath it's incomplete. Broken up. Should have been an interception. Ron Rice was there. Defensively for the Lions, they gave up 329 yards last week in their loss to Tennessee. Porsche playing with a tender ankle. The linebackers, Claiborne, moves from the outside to the inside. And in the secondary, it's Light Campbell, Rice, the Detroit native, and Terry Fair. Brings on Neil Rackers in to attempt a 47-yard field goal. Very strong leg, 6 of 12. 18 of 33 in his career. They get it down, it's up. And no good. He's had his troubles this season. And the Bengals let the Lions off the hook. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bella Serra Pino Grigio. It's going to be a beautiful evening. It's going to be a Bella Serra. And by Comp USA where America buys technology. 
Dick LeBeau must be a little frustrated. His team up seven to nothing. Had great field position after both turnovers at the Detroit 43 and the Detroit 22. The result, a punt and a missed 47-yard field goal. Schlesinger, not a lot of room, picks up a couple. And remember, when we talked to Takeo Spikes and the Bengals yesterday, they told us that not only is this a must win, but they must win this game convincingly. <laughs> and that's interesting because you haven't heard must win and convincingly in the same sentence for the Cincinnati Bengals for the last 10 years. But that's about the attitude that Dick LeBeau has brought to this team. They've got to take it up another level. And when you do that, you've got to score in the red zone. They've had two great opportunities come away with zero points. Second and seven from the 40. Batch on the play action fake caught by David Sloan. Almost lost it, but manages to hold on. And the Bengals, a very important game for them because next week they go into the bye, followed by a trip to Jacksonville. And they are starting to come back to life. And you mentioned the bye is really the big key because you don't want to go into a bye week and not play for two weeks with a loss. You don't want to be three and four. Four and three is a huge difference. I know it's only one game, but it's a huge difference mentally for this young Cincinnati Bengal team. Third down and one from the 46. Ruben Drones is the deep back. Play action batch setting up. Looking back at Foster. Foster down at the 34. Making that catch in front of Artrell Hawkins. It's a gain of 20. And very impressive for the youngster. Watch him try to get outside. Work your release outside. He's cut off. Watch him come back underneath. Great job by Larry Foster on the deep slant. Charlie Batch stays with him. That's called working your route. And Larry Kirksey, the wide receivers coach for this Detroit Lions, is as good as there is in the league. He's working with these young guys. It's a big challenge, but he does a heck of a job with them. First down and 10 from the 34. Here's Jones, and he is tripped up. Nice looking play for the Bengals defensively by Bernard Weddington. And the Lions have all kinds of injury problems, especially at the receiver position. Jermaine Crowell out with a knee injury, suffered last week against Tennessee. He won't be back for the rest of the year. And the great Herman Moore injured his hip, and he may be gone for the rest of his career. And you look at these injuries, and there's some significant players. Starter, starter, Herman was the third wide, Boyd, Schultz, Westbrook, McDougal. I mean, there's a whole group of guys that are missing that need to be part of this team. Second and nine from the 33. Here's Batch to the sideline. And it's caught at the 30-yard line. Artrell Hawkins with the tackle on Johnny Morton. Log on to NFL.com and vote for the AFC and NFC All-Star teams to play in this year's Super Bowl. Vote now at NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. I wish they would have had that when I was around because I would have had all my friends online <laughs> voting for me. Third down and six from the 30, but you would have been beaten out by Jay Novacek. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, don't make me come over there on the other side of the booth. <laughs> they need to go to the 24 play action. Batch steps up, and Batch loses it. Ball recovered by Detroit, but Reynard Wilson delivering a lick, and that's one thing that bothers Marty Morningway. Charlie Batch's inability to get rid of the football and not take sacks. Well, you've got to feel pressure coming, and you don't expect it right off the bat. And you see Renard Wilson just throw the tackle by and come back underneath. Great job. And that's a whole lot of body to move right there. Big Aaron Gibson, 370 pounds. Glenn Steele knocked it away. So Hanson into attempt a 51-yarder. He's got a strong leg. Gets it up. And it's straight. And good. So after giving up a 96-yard touchdown run, and turning the ball over twice inside their own territory, the Lions are down only 7-3. Game summary. John Kitna has only thrown one pass. Charlie Batch, 6 of 7. However, interception. Lions have fumbled it twice. Corey Dillon ran that one for 96 yards for touchdown. Longest in Bengals history. Jason Hansen now with two 50-yard field goals on the season. Picked a 50-yarder, 51-yarder earlier this year and a 51-yarder today. So Hansen ready to send it away. Keaton back deep. Starts from the six. 
And Keaton is wrestled down at the 15. Nicely done for the second time by Ruben Drones on special teams. Monday on CBS, it's a night of Halloween hysteria, starting with the King of Queens that's so funny, it's scary. Followed by Yes, Dear and Monday's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond. Then stay tuned for Ted Danson and Becker. And don't miss an all-new Family Law. It's all here Monday on CBS. So funny and scary. That's pretty good. Are you, <laughs> oh, I free, made, are you free I made that up over myself. There? Yes, yeah, I am. That is sharp. First down and 10 for the Bengals at their own 16. And they could possibly be up 21 to nothing. However, it's only 7-3. John Kittner to pass, throws it out of the backfield. Dillon with the catch, makes the first man miss. And Dillon will get a yard. Terry Fair. Here's Jim Nance in New York with an update. All right, Gus, the Panthers scored first. 94-yard fumble return, but the Jets special teams deliver. Henderson on the block punt. Hayes on the recovery. And the point after for the Jets is good. Casey had been blocked at the other end. 7-6 Jets. Go back to you. All right, Jim. Second down and nine right now for the Bengals at their own 17. Peter Warwick in motion. They hand it off to Dillon. Dillon over the left side. Not a lot of room. Picks up about three. No, no, no. Corey Dillon running hard. Luther Ellison on the play. Ron Rison on the play. And something Corey Dillon has to face every week is that eighth man in the box. Everybody's going to play that safety up. Last week, the Bears showed something that they hadn't shown all year, and that's blitzing that safety. And I'd expect the Lions to do more of that today, more run blitz and fill those gaps, kind of hold those lanes and keep them really tight. That takes us to the end of the first quarter of play. Corey Dillon, big first quarter, 107 yards rushing. We'll return to the Pontiac Silverdome right after That's this the end message. Of the first quarter. Cincinnati on top. There's one of the great players in National Football League history, Lem Barney, the great Detroit Lion in the Hall of Fame, who, by the way, played with Dick LeBeau for the Lions. John Kipnick. Steps up in the pocket with a huge opening. Kitna still running, and he slides down at the 40. John Kitna gains 21 yards. And this is some of the same type of trouble that they had with Steve McNair last week, a couple critical moments in the game, and you see this pressure from the defensive front of the Detroit Lions. Great job getting penetration, but then there's nobody there at the second level. John Kitna sees it, takes off, gets big yardage and slides. Tennessee picked up its second win of the season with a 27-24 win over Detroit right here at the Silverdome. First down and 10 from the 38. Play action, Kitna. Standing, looking, Warwick with the catch. Peter Warwick down at the Detroit 43. A gain of 20. So in two plays, they pick up 41 yards. Ron Rice to tackle him. And the Bengals need to be able to throw on first down. They should have, you see the play action right there? They should have one of the best play action games in the league with Corey Dillon, that great big back coming there. And there's Peter Warren coming across downfield. Warren get the ball in his hands, Gus, and make some plays. Leads the team in receptions. His 31st of the year. First down and 10 from the 42. Here's Dillon with the opening. Corey Dillon again, gashing the Lions down to the 29. And there's just no combination in the league of that same speed and power. There's just no. And there's a lot of guys with speed, and there's a lot of guys with power. Watch him go ahead and get, string it out, hit the hole, bang. He's through it right now. Watch this. A cry to cross back. Safety's making a miss. And that's what Corey Dillon brings. And when you get him rolling on a full steam, if you don't get penetration right now, he's off to the races. Vince Tobin watching his defense struggle early. First and 10 from the 30. Flag on the play. I think Big James Hall, bottom of the screen, getting a little early move on that snap count. Neutral zone infraction on the defense. Still first down. Things falling apart for Marty Mortingweg early. Corey Dillon, remember last year, Brent, 278 yards rushing versus Denver to break Walter Payton's single-game record. He's off to a 
unbelievable start today. 120 yards rushing on seven carries. First down and five. Inside handoff, Neal. Neal crawls to the 20. And there's a guy that nobody talks about enough is Lorenzo Neal, one of the best isolation blockers in the National Football League. Corey Dillon's got to be excited to have him right in front of him. And Gus, you mentioned Corey Dillon and what a great start he's off to today. But the key with Corey Dillon is he pounds on you. He wears on you. And you see Lorenzo Neal right here. That's a whole lot of weight, 240 pounds. That'll pound on you and wear on you as well. So as the game goes along, they're going to keep giving them the ball. It's going to be a lot for this Lions defense to hold up against. Second down and short. They need a yard. Here's Dillon looking, has it. And it gets down to the 16. Luther Ellis with the tackle. Tonight on 60 Minutes, did Saddam Hussein have a hand in the terror attacks on the United States? Leslie Stahl reports from Saddam's Iraq. Tonight on 60 Minutes. And talking about Lorenzo Neal, he came over as an unrestricted free agent from Tennessee. Eddie George could use him right about now. You know, Eddie George made some comments at the beginning of the season that he likes seeing him the field without him, but... I think it's very apparent they need a miss for Renzo Neal. Kicked into the sideline. Darnell Scott out of bounds inside the 10. So Darnay Scott, who missed all of last year because of a broken leg. And watch Darnay Scott get the speed in bounds and then take out our audio guy. Smack him. Bang. Oh, hey, our audio guy. Look at that. Darnay Scott holding him up. What a good guy. That's presence of mind, Gus, right there. Catch the ball, hang on to it, knock the audio guy, but hold on. Man. Well, how about the toughness of our audio guy? Second down and three from the nine. <laughs> you can take a hit. And this is Brendan Bennett skipping forward. Gets to the seven-yard line. 10.58 to go in the second quarter of play. Bengals got off to a great start with a 96-yard touchdown run by Corey Dillon. Lions have turned it over twice inside their own 45-yard line, but the Bengals were unable to capitalize. And now Cincinnati threatening once again. And this is a perfect opportunity for play action. Everybody's thinking Corey Dillon right up the gut. Fake, little let the tight ends loose. They give it to Dillon. Dillon breaks a tackle, spins. Makes chicken salad, gets down to the five. You know, that's unbelievable, because Corey, Corey Dillon was stopped. He was stopped twice, and you see him spin and bounce and lean forward. Watch this. He's going to get stopped initially by the penetration of the defensive front of the Detroit Lions. Gets kicked wide. There's linebackers. There's Aldridge. There's a safety. There's Terry Fair. Nobody's even trying to hit him. Makes it first down and goal. From the five, 11th play of the drive that started at the Cincinnati 16. Here's Dillon following his blocks, tripped up and goes down. Corey Dillon with an opportunity, but Sean Rogers, second round pick, rookie out of Texas, making a nice play, and they really like him in Detroit. Wow, I really like him too, watching him on film. And He's still a rookie. He's going to make some rookie mistakes, but he can be dominant in this league. And when I think about Sean Rogers, I think about a guy that played in, here in Detroit for several years, pro baller, stalwart of that D-line, Jerry Ball. No question. Wow. Jerry Ball, great player. Second down goal from the eight. They lose three yards on the play. Out of the shotgun. Four receiver package for the Bengals inside. Ball intended for Darnay Scott. Coming up to break it up, Terry Fair. And see, we talked, I talked earlier about play action, and you want to take those shots because this isn't a four-wide team, Cincinnati Bengals. Darnay Scott, outstanding receiver, but this team isn't used to running four wide. With your best opportunity to fake out that defense is the Corey Dillon play action play on first down when everybody expects Dillon coming after you. Because now you're in obvious passing situations, like now third and long, and you gotta get a touchdown. What do you expect? I expect. I'd take Darnay Scott. They take the reverse. Getting the underneath to Dillon. Touchdown. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Great call. And that's a little trickery. By the offensive coordinator, Bob Bretkowski. 
An eight-yard touchdown for Dillon, second of the game. They're going to fake a little reverse here and come back, misdirection, and just release Corey Dillon right over the middle. A little delayed, tailback screen. And let's see if he gets in. He has two guys trying to give him a shot. Yep, and he gets that ball across, right across the end strike. You got it. Now Detroit wants to take a look. Marty Morningweg. And I think from that angle that he was in, Gus, and it's, it's when that knee hits, and let's see, here's the tackle, but Corey Dillon always keeps his legs moving. Detroit let's see, there's the knee down, the the field, and it's hard to tell. The and remember, Gus, to overrule the call on the field, it has to be indisputable evidence in the replay. So they call touchdown on the field. So there's the knee hitting, and there's the ball. And it just has to break that plane of the line. And you know what? It's going to be tough to tell. That knee and that ball were almost simultaneous. And like we said, it's got to be indisputable to overturn the call in the field. And so I would say the touchdown stands. Another look. You just can't tell with that knee, and it's getting ready to hit right there. But is that ball, and that's why the officials are right, standing right here, and they have the best view of it. And they can see when that knee hits and where that ball is. And there's the knee, and there's the ball going. We need that matrix view that CBS yeah, had in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's right. How, Eye great, vision how great was that? Yes. Johnny Greer, the referee today. Cincinnati dominating the first half of play. And just to refresh you on the rules on replay, the coach gets two challenges. A team timeout charge if the call is not reversed. He's got 90 seconds to make his decision. I got my watch going. He's at 37. This season, 23 times calls have been overturned. After reviewing the play, the ball crossed the goal line prior to the knee touching down. The play on the field stance is called. We have a touchdown. So Cincinnati gets a touchdown. Detroit, Detroit loses the timeout. And Corey timeout. Dillon continues to star here in Pontiac. Picks up his second touchdown of the day. First was a rushing touchdown, now a receiving touchdown. And that's the beauty of replay. And that's exactly why we have it in this league. I'm a big proponent of that. And the officials do a great job with it. That one very timely, right on top of things. Rackers comes in to attempt the extra point. High snap. Handled nicely by Nick Harris. It's good. So John Kitna and the Cincinnati offense excited because they're up 14-3. 14-3, Cincinnati on top of Detroit here in the second quarter of play. The scoring drive, 13 plays covering 84 yards. They held the ball for seven minutes and 24 seconds. Corey Dillon had the eight-yard reception for a touchdown. Neil Rockers ready to send it away. Desmond Howard back deep. Here's Howard from the two. Desmond Howard following his blocks. Desmond Howard knocked down at the 26-yard line after a 27-yard return. Adrian Ross with the tackle. Dillon on the sideline waiting to get back in. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. IBM, taking e-business and your business to the next level. And by the United States Marine Corps, the change is forever. That young lady really excited about Halloween. But a gruesome start for the Lions here in the first half. First down and 10 at the 28. Lamont Warren over the right side. Shot down. Oliver Gibson, the nose guard with the tackle. Now, for the best NFL coverage on the net, including expert analysis and in-depth team reports, go to CBS dot sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. And Oliver Gibson told us he knows what it's like to be 0-5 here a couple years ago this Bengals team. He said you just quit after a few things go wrong. He said we want to make some things go wrong here early in the game. And they have. 
Second and ten from the 28. Here's Batch slipping. Batch to throw. Batch is sacked at the 20. Second sack of the day given up by the Lions. They've given up 26 on the season. And really the problem today is this offensive line for Detroit hasn't been able to give Charlie Batch time, hasn't let the routes develop. There's pressure. You see him just starting to set his feet, and there's already pressure. And Brian Simmons there, and spikes at the end. And you've got to be able to have time to set your feet and read the defense. And Renard Wilson has been making some plays as well. And it's just, it's a free-for-all. It's a feeding frenzy for the linebackers of the Cincinnati Bengals, and everybody's fighting to get the next sack. Third down and a long 18 from the 20. They need to go to the 38 for first down. Charlie Batch steps up underneath Johnny Morton with the catch. Dives forward to the 35, but he'll be short of the first down by about four yards. It's a 14-yard pickup. Chris Carter, Reynard Wilson there to stop him. So that brings on John Jett, who's standing at the 20. Peter Warwick. Is back deep at the 26. Warwick, a dangerous return man when he played at Florida State. High wobbly kick. Warwick, fair caught at the 20. A 45 yard punt. And here come the Bengals. 14-3, Cincinnati on top of Detroit. Cincinnati looking for win number four on the season, heading into the bye week. The Lions continue to struggle as John Kitna approaches the line of scrimmage at his own 21-yard line, first down. The pitch, Corey Dillon around the right side, and Dillon will lose yards. Allen Aldridge there to tackle him. Now, don't forget, next Sunday, we have a doubleheader for you. A couple of time changes, too. The feature game at 4 will be Cleveland at Chicago. That has been moved, also. Indianapolis-Buffalo, now a 1 o'clock game. So the big early game, Baltimore at Pittsburgh. It begins with the NFL today. I want to know who predicted that Cleveland-Chicago is going to be the feature game this year. Wow, that's tough. Both teams. Beside us, of course. Improved. We didn't do it. Come on, come on. Second down and 11 from the 20. Corey Dillon once again. Dillon over the 20, up to the 21. And Stephen Boyd with the stop. Let's take a look around the NFL. Good matchups going on. Jacksonville and Baltimore tied at three apiece. Baltimore struggling. Blown out last week at Cleveland. The Jets on top of the Panthers. Your former coach, George Seifert, in Carolina. Jim Nance and I told him, don't take that Carolina job. It's a lot of rebuilding to do there. Third down, 10 from the 21. Rams up big over New Orleans. Here's Kipna underneath. It is intercepted. Rice. Ron Rice still running. And he's down at the 25. The Lions finally catch a break. The second interception in two weeks for Ron Rice. And finally, the ball is going to bounce the Lions' way. Ron Rice looking for that ricochet, and he's going to get it coming across the field. You see the blitz. Here comes the pressure right now. Nice job picking it up. John Kitna delivers it behind Warwick, though. And there's that ball up in the air, and Ron Rice right on the spot to make the play. Now, just know Marty Morningway in his style. He wants to go after. You know, after a turnover, you always take your shot. First play. First down and 10 from the 24. They send Morton and Foster to the top of your screen. Here comes Foster in motion. Play action. Back setting up deep. Back in trouble. Sack. And it goes out of bounds. Justin Smith. Once again, his third sack of the season. And here's a guy that held out all of training camp because of a contract dispute, the fourth overall selection out of Missouri, and he is playing heck of a football. And let's watch rookie versus rookie, Backus versus Smith. 
And back is nice, a nice job initially. Watch Smith, watch the strength. Just push right on through, come on in. And they were going for the post to Larry Foster, but Charlie Batch can't set his feet. That's about the fifth time today this Lions offensive line can't handle the zone blitz scheme of the Cincinnati Bengals. They're just getting gashed. Second down and 10. Play action. Batch sets up the screen. Warren with blockers in front of him. Cuts it in. Warren looking. Dragged down at the five. Reynard Wilson with the saving tackle, a 14-yard gain for Warren. And that's how you stop that zone blitz. Go ahead and run the screen. If they're going to put pressure on your quarterback in your line, run the screen. Watch Lamont Warren. Nice job picking the ball. Down low behind him, opened up his hip, cut back. Nice move right there, down the sidelines. Nice receipt, reception right there for Lamont Warren. First down and goal for the Lions at the Cincinnati 7, and they need six points instead of a field goal. Out of the offset eye, Warren the deep man. They give it to him on the counter, and Warren stumbles ahead to the five. Picks up two, makes it second down and goal. Mark Roman with the tackle. We saw the Chicago Bears last week roll over the Bengals in the red zone. Just pounding them. And look at this Detroit offense this year. They've had some chances down there. Four touchdowns out of 11 possessions. But you got to get down there more. And it can't be field goals. In a game like this, it's got to be touchdowns. Second down goal from the six. Play action. Batch looking in the end zone. And he throws it out of bounds or out of the back of the end zone. And that'll bring up third down and goal. Now, that was a time that Charlie Batch had a chance to set his feet. And the defensive backs with the Bengals were just blanketed over the Lions receivers. Now, at that point, when that happens, Charlie's got to know the rush is coming somewhere. He's got to step up. He can make some things happen with his legs. And he's standing in the pocket an awful long time, especially with this offensive line, giving up some things and some pressures. He's got to be able to move out of pocket, run, get some yards running. Third down goal from the six. Warren in motion out of the backfield. Here's Batch looking. To the corner, overthrows his receiver. Johnny Morton was open. And the Lions will have to attempt a field goal. Andrew Bingle, maybe Oliver Gibson. And let's watch Johnny Morton running just an inside out route. Do you see him? Nice job setting the corner back up inside, coming back out to the corner, and Charlie just throws the ball out of bounds. Lions have scored only six of 11 times this year inside the red zone. Four touchdowns and a couple of field goals. And Charlie Batch can make some things happen. He's got some tools. He's a competitor. But probably one of the biggest issues, Gus, with this West Coast offense is you've got to be able to anticipate your receivers getting open. Because by the time you see them open, it's too late. So you've got to anticipate. You say, hey, I've got Johnny Morton run against a Spangle secondary that's their weakness. I'm going to go ahead, and after he comes out of that break and makes that inside move, bang, I'm going to shoot it to his outside shoulder. You've got to anticipate, and that's part of the issues of getting comfortable with this West Coast offense, both the quarterback and the receivers. But I think Charlie Batch can do it. So Hanson in as Oliver Gibson has walked to the sideline. He will be attempting a 24-yarder already good from 51 today. Jet is the holder. It's good. So the Lions trying to keep it as close as possible. 3.47 to go in the second quarter. Cincinnati up 14-6. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Direct TV, the number one digital satellite entertainment provider, and by Staples. Staples has everything you need for your business at great low prices. Happy Halloween. The game summary from Detroit. The Lions have turned it over three times and have been in the red zone once, coming up with only a field goal. Gus Johnson, Brent Jones with you, Jason Hansen ready to send it away. Curtis Keaton stands at the one. Hansen. Keaton camps under it. Will start from his own one. 
Keaton bottled up and driven down at the 17. Gus Johnson, Brent Jones with you, and I guess the first half is a half has been a half of missed opportunities for both teams. And that's unfortunately the MO for both of these teams. The modus operandi is that they miss opportunities, and that's why they've had trouble this year. Both the teams have struggled inside the red zone. You can't come away with field goals and ex expect to be a successful team in the National Football League. It's got to be touchdowns, and it's got to be good Offside, play. Number 26. Marty Morningweg. The kicking team. Great player we'll in college in Montana. Was, and there was an offside on the kickoff. So they may do it once again. You know, I played special teams a couple years, and the worst thing in the world was a penalty after you already busted your tail to get all the way downfield, ran full speed. You're on the sideline sucking wind a little bit, and you got to go out and you got to do it again. Actually, we did four one time in Tampa Bay in the four? humidity. Yeah. And you were on the kickoff team? Yeah. And then, like the third one, I just said, forget it. I'm staying on the bench. <laughs> I got to go in on offense. <laughs> That's the greatest day in a, uh, a fella's careers when he's a starter and he's off most of the special teams because you get winded and you got to go all out. When you're on special teams, it's got to be 100% commitment. And then you go into the huddle and you're already tired. You got to run routes and mess around and you're already tired from couple special teams plays. So both teams line up. Jason Hansen. Preparing to send it away, and here we go once again. Line drive kick. Keaton backpedaling. Starts at the four. Still running. Gets over the 35 to the 38. Eight yard line, make it the 39, a 34 yard return stopped by Larry Foster. Wednesday on CBS, what began as a race around the world has become TV's greatest adventure. And with only five teams left, their biggest challenges are just ahead. Don't miss an all new amazing race Wednesday on CBS. 3.28 to go in the second quarter. Bengals up 14 6. At the 40-yard line, first down and 10. Getting a straight drop, looking. Donnie Scott with the catch, runs over a man, and is pulled down at the 33. A 27-yard gain. Tackle on the play made by Kurt Schultz. And Kurt Schultz finally getting back into the game for the Lions. Has missed the games this year, has been injured, and you see him. He just wasn't sure about that first contact, and usually that's a knockout blow for a safety coming in on a wide receiver running a deep slant like that. And you see Kurt Schultz, just not the same old hard-hitting guy, just kind of feeling his way, trying to get back in the flow of things. And, and it's unfortunate, and it's... When you try to cover up for some things, Gus, when you try to cover up an injury or you're just not sure you're more tentative, that's really your best chance to get injured. And Kurt Schultz has been a great safety for several years in this league, and that's that's not the way you want to start your comeback into this season. Came over as a free agent from Buffalo, has been out of the lineup because of a pinched nerve in his back. Goes over to the sideline. Bengals threatening once again, first down and 10 at the Detroit 33. Kitna, five of eight, 63 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Bennett. Written down at the 34. Now coming up on the next Hill Halftime Report, join Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry for all the scores and highlights. And look at these guys, new outfits. I was going to say, don't they know it's Halloween? Aren't they going to dress up? They're trying to dress up like Dion nowadays. <laughs> and the latest NFL news plus a CBS News update, America on Guard. Was Dion dressed like Halloween today? It's a matter of opinion. He had some. He had that nice test pattern suit in the interview. I kind of liked it. That was impressive. Second down and ten from the 33 for the sideline. Warren got a bounds at the 30. A gain of three yards. John Kitna looking very relaxed under center this afternoon. Kitna coming over from Seattle, often criticized while he was a Seahawk. Didn't get along with Mike Holmgren, but right now he's getting along with Dick LeBeau. 
Bengals up 14-6. two-minute warning. Saturday, Josh Reed and the LSU Tigers tangle with Tyler Watts and the Alabama Crimson Tide. The action begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman on college football today, starting at 3 Eastern time. Bob Bretkowski, the offensive coordinator in Cincinnati, doing a tremendous job. He's the guy in the middle with the salt and pepper hair. There you go. Those are the Corey Dillon plays, and they get a little one inch, one inch by one inch sticky pad yellow thing for the rest of the team <laughs> plays. <laughs> the third down and seven from the 30. Here's Kitten, a short drop underneath top. Scott racing into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. 30 yards. Man, oh man, if you're going to blitz, you better have your corners stay outside and not let the wide receiver in on the slant. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to stop right now. Darnay Scott, great job of using his hand to keep his balance. Injured Lion on the field. Barrett Green inside the five. Green tried to make the tackle. And not that it matters too much, Gus. That's an automatic timeout for Detroit inside two minutes. And let's watch Darnay Scott on the outside. You see the, the throw inside and the corner and the safety run into each other. And that's really kind of been the year it's been for this Detroit Lions team. Stupid penalties. You saw a guy offside on the kickoff that ended up being about an 18-yard penalty. So the Bengals started the 40, a couple big plays, and down the field, you take a chance blitzing. And Darnay Scott, nice job holding on to the ball. Great balance. Let's watch it from inside. Here comes the blitz. You see everybody coming. And there's the collision outside. Look at that. Nice job keeping his hand down on the field to keep his balance. Just steps out of the grasp of the linebacker there, number 54, Barrett Green, who took a chin and a little shake and bake for Darnay. Kitna. Also, two touchdown passes today. One to Corey Dillon, now to Darnay Scott. And Tequil Spikes, as he told us earlier this week, or rather yesterday, that not only was this a must win, but they must defeat the Lions convincingly. And they're off to a good start as Scott scores his second touchdown of the season. Cincinnati taking a 20 to 6 lead. And quite honestly, it could be a lot more. You're right. Green, second year out of West Virginia. And you're going to see him try to take that diving great effort here on Darnay Scott, who kicks up. You see him kick up that leg and then just gets a little bit of heel right there. He kicks and drags on the turf. And, man, that, that's a long way to drag on that turf. And so he might have got it on the chin or up in the Adam's apple. And it could be any number of things. But that, you just got to talk about this Lions team. And it's been frustrating. They hadn't been able to get a win. And Marty Morningweg, Matt Millen come in and install new systems on both sides of the ball. And I think the players feel like they're going to get better and they're have, they have an opportunity, but they have to go out and prove it on the field. The coach can't play for you on the field. The president can't go out and make the plays on the field. You got to be able to pass block. You got to be able to catch the ball. You got to be able to make tackles. So Marty Morningweg, who had a lot of success last year with San Francisco guiding Jeff Garcia and Terrell Owens, Charlie Garner to Pro Bowl honors. Also the fourth ranked offense in the National Football League. The Rockers in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. So with a minute 53 to go here in the first half of play, Cincinnati takes a 21-6 lead. Welcome back 21 to 6 Cincinnati on top of Detroit. The scoring drive four plays 60 yards took them close to two minutes to get into the end zone. Now don't forget coming up next it's the second half of our doubleheader watch Oakland battle Philly Miami take on Seattle New England play Denver or Buffalo against San Diego. 
That's coming up next on CBS. And the most interesting game to me, Brent, Buffalo at San Diego, Doug Flutie. The Flutie ball. And Rob Johnson meet each other for the first time. Wow. There's a lot of bitterness going on there, huh? To say the least. <laughs> Two guys competed for the starting job in Buffalo last year. Flutie shipped out and has found success in Southern California. Here's Desmond Howard from the goal line. Howard goes up the sideline, still running. Howard still running. Cuts it back. Howard! Desmond Howard! Desmond Howard tripped up inside the 10. He's been doing it his entire career. And Corey Hall, what a tremendous play on special teams to bring him down. And tremendous play is right. But let's watch Desmond Howard initially get out, come back, get onto the sideline. As a Bengal, you know you've got to prepare. And you see him coming, bouncing back out. And watch Corey Hall. You see the arm over right there? From that angle that he had, there was no way that he should have caught Desmond Howard. That's a great play. Might have saved you a touchdown. And Jimmy Wyrick for the Lions quit blocking. If he would have stayed with his block, Howard could have waltzed into the end zone. A 91-yard return. And a timeout has been called by the Lions. Because I'm just wondering if Desmond Howard didn't step out. I was getting down the sideline, and I thought, and maybe not, I thought right down here. Eh, nope. He's close, right oh. there, that foot right there. Did that back of that foot get on the line? You couldn't tell from that angle. So replay has looked at it and confirmed that he was inbound. Well, that system is rolling today, that replay system. But keep your eye on Jimmy Wyrick. If he continues to block, Desmond Howard gets into the end zone. Well, you don't expect a guy to be able to arm over you and come back inside. Desmond Howard pull away. He knows that. That was a great effort by Corey Hall. First down and goal from the nine. Here's Batch looking underneath. It's caught down at the one-yard line. Johnny Morton, and Johnny Morton gets up. Dancing. Down 21-6. Maybe just trying to get into the flow of the game. This Lions offense hasn't had much flow. And Johnny Morton's a big key to this offense. Really, the big problem's been Charlie Batch hasn't been able to set his feet. Too much pressure from the zone blitz scheme. Morton splits to the top of your screen. Foster at the bottom. Here's Lamont Warren looking. He will come up about a yard short of a touchdown. Brings up third down goal. Do you go for it on fourth down here? Absolutely. You're playing at home. And like we said, field goals aren't going to get you victories in this game. And the Lions are coming in with two tight ends. U formation. Look for a little play action. One of the tight ends sneaking out to the corner. That's the spot. Use the tight ends. It's tough to stretch the field with your wide receivers with this lack of depth of field right here. Lions with one timeout. 29 seconds to go. Third down and goal. At the one, here's Warren, touchdown Detroit. Just a big power shot, Lamont Warren pounding it right inside. And just saying our offensive line is bigger and stronger than your defensive line, and that's what they said right there. And running the ball, that might be the case. Hanson in to attempt the extra point, which is good. So the Lions, with 21 seconds remaining here in the first half of play, make it a 21 to 13 game, courtesy of the 91-yard return by Desmond Howard. That sets up the one-yard plunge by Warren. Straight ahead running for Warren, and the Lions cut into the Cincinnati lead. 
Coming up on the next Still Halftime Report, join Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry for all the scores and highlights and the latest <laughs> NFL news plus a CBS News update, America on Guard. Now, no way are those Mike Ditka's real arms. <laughs> they used to be. <laughs> yeah, they used to be, unless he's doing something and he's not telling the rest of us. Lamont Warren with the touchdown, and that is his fifth career touchdown. But Desmond Howard with the huge 91-yard return inside the Cincinnati 10. Hanson, line drive kick. Keaton picks it up at the 8. Keaton breaks it back, and Keaton tackled at the 33. Now, of the surprise teams this year, which one has the best shot of going the distance? Bears, Bengals, Browns, Chargers, 49ers, or Steelers? Ah, uh, let's see. Well, I went on record saying that this team's going to win the AFC Central, so I'm going to stick with them, even though this is an obvious pick, and they're ripping the Bears, at least the last time I saw. Everybody's looking pretty good. Going, sticking with the Steelers. Okay. It's too obvious to pick my own team. First down and 10 from the 32 for the Bengals. They snap it and will head into the locker room. Missed opportunities for the Bengals. They could have been up by a lot more. However, they go into the locker room with a 21-13 lead. And the key for Detroit, they haven't quit. And that's what Marty Morningway has brought to this team. This team keeps playing hard even when things aren't going well. Dick LeBeau heads in. Charlie Batch needs more time to throw the football. I'm sure it'll be addressed during the halftime. So the Detroit Lions 0-5 on the year against the Cincinnati Bengals 3-3. Three three. Cincinnati has a bye next week, so this is a must win for them. And that is the end of the first half with the score. Cincinnati 21, Detroit 13. Coming up, it's the next Dell Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. CBA Sports presents the Nextel Direct Connect Halftime Report. Nextel, get right through. Happy Halloween, friends. Welcome to the Nextel Halftime Report. Jim Nance, along with Mike Ditka, Randy Cross, Jerry Glanville. Got a couple of blowouts out there, including Tampa Bay mauling Minnesota. But two audiences come in here right now in the 1 o'clock window. We got Carolina at halftime over the Jets with the KC field goal right before the half. Very unusual game here. A couple of turnovers uh, made the big difference. Uh, nobody really moving the football. You look at Winky. He's 6 out of 15 with 39 yards. And right now, his team's ahead. Carolina scoring right here on the 94-yard return of a Richie Anderson fumble by Richard Anderson. It was reviewed to make sure it was a catch. It held up. The PAT missed, however. 6-0 Carolina. And their linebacker, Dean Wells, for Carolina stripped that ball. And here's how the Jets get on board. Sauerbrunn, the only weightlifting punter in the league, gets his <laughs> punt block. He's got big biceps. The ball was too heavy. <laughs> Carolina again with a field goal by Casey leads at 9-7 at halftime. Elsewhere in the NFL today, the Jags and the Ravens, 3-3. That's all we have on the board at halftime down in Baltimore, Mike. And that's about what it is. Not much very, uh, not much happening here. They're both about the same. Cunningham's playing pretty good in the football game. These teams are exercising what they've done all year. They can't get in the end zone. Cannot get in the uh, Here's a picture of Cunningham early in the game. This is Brunel now. Fourth and inches. He scrambles, tries to get the ball down to Smith. Incomplete. Well, he caught it, but out of bounds. Out of bounds. Well, it's incomplete. That's the same Ravens. Thing. <laughs> that was You're incomplete right. in Canada. Very sacked by linebacker uh, Peter Bowler and Michael McCurry. And here is the best play of the game. Jacksonville ought to put this one in and keep it in all the time. Here he goes. And Brunel used to do this all the time, as Randy said. And I don't think he likes to run anymore. He's a little bit nervous about uh, getting hit. If you had his knees, you wouldn't either. In fact, matter of fact, he does if have I had his knees. money, I'd run like that. He does have your if knees. If I had his money, I'd run every time. That Ravens defense has not made an interception now in 10 quarters. Meanwhile, the Bengals on the first play from scrimmage, the longest play from scrimmage in franchise history. Corey Dillon. With 123 yards and the bulk of it coming right here seconds into the game. Well, how about 96 yards the first time you touch the ball if you're Corey Dillon? Good thing hey, Kidney got made it. Hey, if you're Detroit, I think you'll get 100 today, Randy. <laughs> 123 at the half, Mike. If you're, Might hold if up. you're the Detroit Lions, that's your nightmare scenario. Get behind Dick LeBeau and the Cincinnati Bengals early. That means they pound you with Dillon and they come at you with defense. Justin Smith, the rookie. 
gets his what first interception player, yeah. in the NFL. And an excellent play, but he's eaten Jeff Backus up, the rookie out of Michigan, who's at left tackle for Matt Millen and the Lions. And Matt's going, I wonder if they need any help in the broadcast booth right around now to do this game. Darnay Scott brings this one back. It's 21 to 13 right now in this football game. It ought to be about 42 to 13. Lamont Roy, that short touchdown run. Desmond Howard had a 91-yard kickoff return to set that up. 21-13 Beagles in that one. Meanwhile, the Saints and the Rams, a moment ago, Jeff Wilkins connected from 54 yards out, make it 24-6 St. Louis. They had a touchdown in that game, a touchdown pass. Oz Hakeem to Isaac Bruce, who's over 100 yards in receiving. And how about the Bears and the 49ers? Chicago scored moments ago. Shane Matthews to Damon Shelton as Miller has been replaced. He has a bruised left hip in that one, Mike. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. The 49ers are awfully physical in this football game. They knocked Jim Miller out, and they almost knocked Shane Matthews out. That means if they do that, then my man Danny Workle comes in and bang. Because oh. it'll be all over. A physical finesse team? That's right. Your main oh, man. Your main, main man. Your main man. <laughs> and this is the, the biggest blowout half of the season Hello. by any team. It's 28 nothing. but how about this? First down's 20 to nothing. The Vikings don't even have a first down well, in the first that's, half. That's and what's happening? But as Tampa Bay's gone away. back to running the football and controlling with toughness, and Minnesota's gone back to fighting on the sideline. Yeah, it's man. two teams back yeah. to their old thing. Yeah, Chris lost Carter, the there yet. Carter feuding with a couple of the linemen. A reminder, this is a doubleheader day on CBS. And coming up next, many will see Oakland against Philadelphia or Miami out there against Seattle. And Brady and his bunch taking on the Broncos in Denver or Buffalo, San Diego. Straight ahead, CBS News, America on Guard. Thanks for being with us. CBA Sports presents the Nextel Direct Connect Halftime Report. Nextel, get right through. This is a CBS News update, America on Guard. I'm Mika Brzezinski in New York. Good day. A memorial service is getting underway at this hour at the site of the former World Trade Center. Attendance is limited to the families of the thousands of victims. Each family will be given an urn containing soil from the ruins. In the air war, U.S. forces struck more targets in Afghanistan today. Witnesses say 13 civilians were killed on the outskirts of Kabul. On the CBS News broadcast, Face the Nation, Senator John McCain said the anti-terrorism war can't be won through air power alone. We're going to have to put troops on the ground. We're going to have to put them in force. And although they will not be permanent, they're going to have to be very, very significant. In Pakistan, gunmen attacked a Christian church service, killing at least 16 people. Officials blame a banned Islamic group. In Israel, the Islamic Jihad claims responsibility for an attack on a bus stop that left four people dead and 28 wounded. Police shot and killed two gunmen. Other headlines. Today's Washington Post reports Pakistan has turned over a suspect in last year's attack on the USS Cole. New York City health officials are re-examining the death of a postal worker October 10th to determine if anthrax was involved. And White House Chief of Staff Andrew Card warned today that other anthrax-tainted letters may still be in the mail. Stay with CBS News and this CBS station for the latest on America on Guard. I'm Mika Brzezinski, CBS News, New York. CBA Sports presents the Nextel Direct Connect Halftime Report. Nextel, get right through. We're ready for the beginning of the second half of play. Cincinnati on top of Detroit 21-13. Gus Johnson, Brent Jones with you. And not only did Detroit score before the first half ended, but now they get the ball back. Yeah, that, that really was a huge letdown for this Bengals coverage team to let Desmond Howard run the ball down the field 90 yards because that you had exactly what you wanted, a decent lead, and Corey Dillon pounding at the Lions defense in the second half. So Howard gets another opportunity. Racker sends it away. Howard from the six. Desmond Howard running. Desmond Howard outside, down the sideline. Howard, once again, he does it to the 30. Desmond Howard, a 63-yard return. This guy's unbelievable, Gus. Just like the Super Bowl, watch him get it, feel it, follow his line. There's the wedge. Watch Neil Rackers try to trip him. Missed. Oh, nice try. That should have been a penalty. Gets pushed out of bounds going down the sideline from the pursuit. But you know what makes Desmond Howard great is everybody knows it's coming, and he still does it. Officially 65 yards. Remember, he had a 99-yard kickoff return 
for a touchdown while playing with Green Bay in their win in Super Bowl 31 against the Patriots. Play action, back, pumps, looks, sideline, Morgan! Can he get it? No, not at the one. 27 yards for Johnny Morton. And the Lions are at the Cincinnati one. And you saw Charlie Batch do the pump, going after Artrell Hawkins at the top of the screen. Watch Morton run the out and up. Hawkins doesn't bite. Now watch this, the ball is under throw. Morton comes back for the ball. That's called being a playmaker. Number 51, the ball. this is get an eligible up, receiver. Get the ball. 51. That's the difference. Some receivers just stand there and say it's overthrown. First down goal. They throw it into the end zone. Touchdown. David Sloan. Got to go for two. Tie it up. And they are going for two. So just like that, the Lions are one two-point conversion away from tying this game. This is what play action does for you. Sucks up the linebackers. You see all the linebackers inside here. There's a tight end, David Sloan, sneaking out. First touchdown catch of the year for Sloan, who was a Pro Bowl alternate last year. And the previous season went to the Pro After Bowl. After the touchdown, personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, Number 99 of the defense. And an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty has been kickoff. called against Cincinnati. It will be assessed on the kickoff. So momentum right now sitting on the Lions side. Charlie Batch receives the play. And a two-point conversion will tie this game. Schlesinger in the backfield with Batch. Bengals showing blitz. Here they come. Batch throws quickly incomplete. So Cincinnati holds on to their lead. But a lot of time to go. The Lions are right back in this one. ZZ Top in the building, as well as our own Jerry Glanville, who took a flight from CBS studio to attend the second half. That's commitment right there. <laughs> that is. So Detroit now trailing 21-19. They get 15 extra yards for the kickoff. Popped up. Keep, uh, take a knee and the Bengals will start from their own 20. Gus Johnson, Brent Jones with you. The Lions, their last three possessions, two touchdowns and a field goal. Yeah, well, I'm tired of hearing you talking about the Silver Rush and who they're going to think they're going to beat them Bengals. It's two guys. It's Corey Dillon and it's Desmond Howard. They have been providing the fireworks. It's nothing else. You are really, really killing my credibility. <laughs> and the stats from the first half, 228 yards total for Cincy, 109 for the Lions. Desmond Howard has returned four kicks for 212 yards. He's averaging 53 yards per return. Lorenzo Neal with the reception tackled at the 25. And you talked about it. It's just so amazing how much it felt like the Bengals outplayed the Lions in the first half. And we're, we're talking about a two-point game. Bengals with all kinds of opportunities. They lead 21 to 19. The Lions probably played their worst half of football this year. Well, they've had a couple of halves that have been as bad. St. Louis on Monday night. Second and five from the 25. Here's Corey Dillon. And Corey Dillon gets to the 28. Dillon with a big first half. 12 carries for 125 yards. Former second round pick out of the University of Washington. Since that first play of the game, this Detroit defense has tightened up versus the run with Corey Dillon. He's hurt him a few times in the passing game, but they have done a better job if he can discount a 96 yard run on the first play of the game. Third down and two from the 28. Quick strike, kick up. To Warren out of bounds in front of Todd Light, the former Ram, a gain of three. 
And a first down for Cincinnati. And you see John Kitten has been very efficient today for the most part, hitting the open receiver, pulling the ball down when nobody's open, and getting a few yards with his legs. Done a nice job running this offense for the Cincinnati Bengals. Kitten in the first half, 7 of 10, 96 yards. Two touchdowns, one interception. He's 9 of 12 right now. First and 10 from the 31. Kitten looking underneath Corey Dillon. And Dillon slides forward to close to the 40-yard line. A gain of nine. Follow all the games on NFL.com. And after the games, get in-depth analysis and recaps from the experts only at NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. Injured player Green once again was injured at the end of the first half of play, left on his own. But right now he's having some problems at the 37. We'll be back after this. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. CDW, computing solutions built for business. And by the all-new 200-horsepower Acura RSX Type S. Great, great way to spend your Sunday afternoon with the family. Looking at the fall foliage. Or here in Pontiac watching the Lions. Flag on the play. Robert Porsche jumping offside. Going against Detroit. Marty Morningwake's team right back in this game. Number 91, defense. First down. You know, I actually played against Marty Morningwake when I was in Pee Wee football. He was the man in our area where I grew up. Right. We practiced all week. Don't kick off to this guy, whatever his number was. He was fast. Because he'll get. He was faster than heck. Took the opening kickoff 80 yards. Thought he was Desmond Howard. Back in San Jose, California, and, and you know what? He ended up, when I was a sophomore in high school, he was the Northern California Player of the Year quarterback at Oak Grove High School. At five feet, nine inches. First and 10 from the 45, Kitna caught Darnay Scott, and Scott is wrestled down at the 42 by Todd Light, a gain of 13. Marty Morningweg played at Montana, quarterback, set 15 passing records, also won the Big Sky Conference Championship. Prior to his arrival, had the Montana had never done it. And his high school coach was a pretty good coach as well. Yeah, a guy by the name of Mike Holmgren was actually his coordinator. His high school coach, Phil Stearns, has been hired with the Lions. Does a nice job, assistant coach down there. And his great Marty remembered his old high school coach and, and the things that he taught him. Right now, the Bengals driving first and 10, getting the goal up top to Donnie Scott. Incomplete and a flag on the play. Todd Light will be called for pass interference. He ran into Darnay Scott, and the Bengals continue to drive. And Kitna has completed seven passes in a row. And that was one of those deals where both guys looked like they were going for the ball. I don't know, it looked a little bit more Pass like incidental contact to me. Number 24, defense. First down. If you turn your head around as a defender and are making a play for the ball, and there's just some contact, contact Darnay Scott does a good job of falling down and I don't know, not as blatant as some of the interference calls we'll see. 27 yard penalty. First and 10 for the Bengals at the Detroit 15. Corey Dillon. Trying to get upfield and Dillon is taken down at the 12. And what a transformation for the Cincinnati squad. We've called a number of their games over the past few years. And under Dick LeBeau, they look poised, they look disciplined, and they also look excited once again about playing football. You know, they really have changed their attitude. And I think that's the biggest thing that Dick LeBeau has done. He's come in here, he's changed them from thinking that they're not a winning team. They've changed the attitude. They've become more disciplined off season, during the season, two minute drill, attention to detail. Done a nice job of changing the the whole atmosphere around Cincinnati. Second and seven, pumps, one in the end zone. Touchdown, Cincinnati. 
The nice double move by Peter Warwick. And this one may be coming back, a holding penalty called against the Bengals. And just when we talk about their discipline, they take a touchdown off the board. And that's a big touchdown pass coming back. And I think they're going to catch Willie Anderson, the right tackle, who looked really frustrated, big number, frustrated, big number 71. Holding number 71. Offense. Yes, it is Willie Anderson, the six-year veteran out of Auburn. So instead of six points, the Bengals faced with a second and 16. Let's check out the right tackle right on this side, Willie Anderson. Let's see, a little late coming off the snap, and you get those arms around there. And Robert Porsche just brings him to the ground, and whether it was a slip or not, you get those arms up over the shoulders, it's going to call. Here it comes the blitz. They set up a screen incomplete. Corey Dillon was taken down in a flag. Kelvin Pritchett in on the play. There is no infraction on the play for illegal touching. The ball was tipped by number 28 prior to touching the lineman. So no penalty flag. The ball was tipped. And that will bring up third down and 16. And once that ball is tipped, it's a free-for-all out there. You can knock down receivers. You can do anything. And you're going to see the ball tipped initially here right side of your screen and there's the tip just enough and it almost hit the line in there and tip calls off all the defense. third down and 16 from the 21 Bengals five of eight on third down conversions getting a bailing it is picked off Kurt Schultz and the Lions force their second turnover of the game Second interception for Kitna, but a flag on the play. And Gus, actually, Darnay Scott and Marco Battaglia are going to run into each other on a crossing route for the Bengals, and John Kitna throws the ball to where one of his receivers After is supposed to be. They ran they into each other. Foul, unnecessary roughness on Detroit. Will penalize 10 yards, and Detroit retains the ball. So the Lions will keep the football. Now watch, here comes Battaglia, watch here, watch, here comes Darnay Scott, watch them smack into each other, bang! And Kitten is throwing the ball right over here to Marco Battaglia, there's nobody there! 9.30 to go, the Lions down 21 to 19. On these fields, gridiron legends will be made. College football is on CBS Sports. 29th career interception for Kurt Schultz. And Detroit takes over, trailing Cincinnati 21-19 at their own nine. First down and 10. Charlie Batch has Schlesinger in the backfield, gives it to the big fullback, and Schlesinger gets close to the 15. Gain of about four. And Gus, one of the best routes to run versus man-to-man -man crossing routes. Watch Darnay Scott, Marco Battaglia, and you, what you want to do is try to pick the defenders. They end up rubbing each other out. You see them come across. Watch this collision. One's supposed to go high, one's supposed to go low. Couldn't figure out which one. Here comes Kurt Schultz in man-to-man -man coverage, and he looks like he's the primary receiver. Johnny Batch dancing out of the pocket, throws, Schlesinger drops it at the 20, and he had running room. Schlesinger, 17 catches on the season. Very good receiving out of the backfield. Yeah, he's done a nice job. Not a guy that usually drops the ball. It's a classic example of getting ready to turn up field, knowing that nobody's around. And you just forget to look the ball in, take the eyes off the ball, and not feeling too good about yourself. Third down, five from the 15. Lions need to go to the 20. Four first down. They send Johnny Morton wide to the top of the screen. Foster. Is the receiver at the bottom. And there's Scotty Anderson, a rookie in motion. Here's Foster with the catch. Goes down. Seven-yard gain. 8.44 to go here in the third quarter of play. Cincinnati leads Detroit 21-19. I'm Gus Johnson along with Brent Jones. 
early on in this game the first play of the game as a matter of fact Corey Dillon took it from the four yard line all the way into the end zone for a touchdown it looked as if Cincinnati would blow out Detroit but somehow the Lions have been able to hang around first and ten from the 23 Warren spinning and he is dropped for a loss great job done by Vaughn Booker Thursday on CBS find out why just getting a drink of water can be a life-threatening adventure don't miss an all-new Survivor Thursday on CBS my kids love Survivor do they really special treat stay up late watch Survivor it is interesting it's a very different show yeah, it's, it's, from Africa now yeah second down and 13 from the 20 743 and counting here in the third quarter of play Back straight, drop back, in trouble, has got to get rid of it, it does. Charlie Batch and a penalty flag has been thrown. It's and you know, tangible grounding. And he's got to get the ball, Gus, back to the original line of scrimmage once he breaks the pocket for it to not be grounding. Now, he broke the pocket, which is tight end to tight end, except I don't believe he got the ball back to the line of scrimmage. One of the new rules being enforced this year by the NFL. He's got to throw it in the direction of a receiver. Intentional grounding, number Closest 10. Closest man to the football was Aaron Gibson, the right there. tackle. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. And we talked earlier about Charlie Batch not being able to set his feet. Here comes Simmons and Foley right now, and there's just nowhere to go. Three offensive linemen in the vicinity. So the Lions penalized yards and a loss of down. Third down, 27 from the six. They need to go to the 32 and a half for first down. Here comes the corner blitz. Hawkins picked up, back to the end zone, and he manages to sneak over the line and is sacked at the one. Fourth sack of the day for the Cincinnati defense. And coming into this game, we were talking about the vaunted defensive line for the Lions, but how about the Bengals' defensive line? They have just turned it up a notch, and they have been all over Charlie Batch, not able to set his feet. You see the pressure, the line being pushed back in his face, and you can't make throws when you can't set your feet. So everyone's going to go back and say, hey, Charlie Batch, you didn't have a good game. Well, that's not the case. You can't have a good game if you don't have time to throw. Mark Duffner, the defensive coordinator, a former head coach at the University of Maryland, as well as Holy Cross. Jack the punt in the back of his own end zone gets off of beauty. Warren backpedals, starts at the 47. Warren with running room. Warren breaks it back. Warren still running. Peter Warren down to the 10. But a flag on the play across the field at the 40. A legal block against Cincinnati. Illegal blocking it back, going to return number 31 of the receiving team. Darrell Williams called for the illegal block. 6.40 to go here in the third quarter of play. Cincinnati up 21-19. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Cellular One. When you need a cell phone, Cellular One is here. And by your neighborhood 7-Eleven store. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Here's the illegal block, Darrell Williams blocking Chidi Awoma in the back. And we've had sloppy play all day today, Gus, and I think it's gonna come down to who makes the least amount of sloppy plays. First down for the Bengals at midfield. Warren, ball thrown behind him. That brings up second down and 10. So a very sloppy game for both teams. Early on, it was Detroit. Most recently, Cincinnati. The Lions have really hurt the Bengals on special teams where Desmond Howard has returned four kicks and is averaging 53 yards per kick return today. Second and 10 from the 50. Here's Kickman standing underneath. Tony McGee with the catch. Down 
at the seam, and he's stopped at the 25 by Kurt Schultz, but it's a gain of 25. And this is one of the things that the Bengals should do more of. They've got two good receiving tight ends. Watch Tony McGee split the seam right down the middle. John Kitten, it goes back five steps. There's his big tight end. Make the play. You see Tony McGee hangs onto it, gets his shoulders down, positive yardage going forward. With Corey Dillon, these tight ends should be a big part of this offense. They've got to in indoctrinate these guys, get them involved in the passing game. McGee played his college football at the University of Michigan. First and 10 for the 25, Dillon looking for space. No space there. Now let's go to New York where Jim Nance is standing by with an update. All right, Gus, the third quarter has been the Ravens' nemesis this season. They've been outscored 42 to 3 in games they've lost or trailed. And Jimmy Smith, 35 yards from Brunel to give the Jags the lead. Jacksonville trying to end the three-game losing streak. Let's go back to Gus and Brett. So the wheels coming off for Baltimore. They've lost two in a row. Last week to Cleveland, the week before to Green Bay. Here's Kitna looking, looking, fire, fires. And Dylan was wide open, but Kitna throws it a little too far away from him. So the standings in the AFC Central. Some surprise teams at the top, Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Well, I think everybody's expecting these two teams to come back to the pack. Cincinnati would be a huge advantage to go 4-3, four 4-3 three, four three Baltimore. Jacksonville, everybody could be right back in it. Watch out for Tennessee. They started off terrible, getting some guys healthy and maybe coming back. It's going to be a one-division playoff this year. I don't think there's going to be the wild card coming from the Central. Good game Monday night in Pittsburgh. They're playing Tennessee. Lions showing blitz. Luther Ellis may have jumped offside. He says he was drawn offside by Willie Anderson. Neutral zone infraction, number 94, defense. Luther Ellis coming off elbow surgery. He's got that left elbow wrapped. Kicked out of the game last week for something he didn't do. Yeah, it wasn't even him. He and here, look at, let's look at right here, right guard. Huh? Everybody's, everybody's pointing at each other. Third down and six. Here's Kitna underneath it. Complete through it at the feet of Peter Warwick. And Warwick upset because he was open. Last couple of throws for Kitna have been poor. And the Bengals send on the field goal team. Rackers has had one attempt today, missing a 47-yarder. Came into the game six of 12. He had missed nine of his last 12 coming into the game. That's a bad streak. This one could really boost his confidence from 39 yards. They get it down. It's up. And good. And that will get you going. Neil Rackers gives Cincinnati a 24-19 advantage. 5.08 to go, third quarter of play. Cincinnati extending their lead, 24 to 19 over the Detroit, the Detroit Lions. And the Cincinnati scoring drive, six plays, a 39-yard field goal for Rackers. The dangerous one. Desmond Howard back deep, and now they don't want to kick it to him. Ball fielded at the 30-yard line, and this is number 51, Dominic Riola, who's a, an offensive lineman. Not a bad runner. Tonight after 60 minutes, what do you tell your child when he asks one of life's biggest questions? Don't miss an all-new education of Max Bickford tonight after 60 minutes on CBS. So the Lions take over with great field position at their own 40. 5.01 to go. Cincinnati leads it 24-19. Foster in motion. Play action. Back setting. Delivers a strike at midfield. Nicely done. Johnny Morton looking it in. And he's about an inch short of the first down. Right in front of Mark Roman. There's definitely a timing aspect to this West Coast offense. 
Johnny Morton running a nice hook route, pivot route, right at 10 yards. Morton lives in Manhattan Beach, California, went to USC. One of the more underrated receivers in the NFL. He has five catches for 60 yards, second and one. From the 49, Warren looking. Falls forward, gets the first down. So Lamont Warren getting an opportunity today because of the injury to James Stewart. Stewart spraining his ankle last week against Tennessee. Didn't practice all week. Tried to go a little bit yesterday, but the ankle too tender. So Lamont Warren getting his first start of the season for the Lions. Detroit moves into Cincinnati territory. First and 10 at the Bengal 49. Schlesinger. With all kinds of running room, straight ahead, and now that Lions offensive line starting to fire off the football, a gain of 11. Here's big Corey Schlesinger getting a chance. You know what he did, Gus, in high school? He drove in the demolition derby, drove a car. What a perfect job for a fullback. And look at him demolishing the Bengals. You gotta be fired up about that. If you're a fullback, what what, a, what, what more could you ask for coming in at, at a high school, smashing cars into each other? <laughs> Fourth year as a starter for the Lions. First and ten from the 38. Sloan in motion. Warren still on his feet. Warren somehow comes out of the pile and picks up about five. Takeo spikes there to bring him down. And we talked about it earlier. The one thing that the Lions have continued to do this year is play hard. High effort on both sides of the ball. You see Lamont Warren, that was all about effort right there. He had his ankles wrapped up, his legs, kept it moving, spinning, keep rolling. Second down, five. The pitch, Warren looking, bounces it outside. Goes out of bounds. Mark Roman there to usher him out of bounds. And you talked about the Lions playing hard. You have to give credit to Coach Morningweg and his staff for continuing to be able to motivate these guys despite their 0-5 record. Well, there was an unbelievable calm around here in Detroit the last couple days. And, and that's what I was really impressed with because usually when you're 0-5, you want to press the panic button. But these guys know it's going to take time. It's going to take time to change the mentality. And I know they were 9-7 last year, but they were lucky to be 9-7. They, they have some decent talent on this team, but not great. They're installing new systems. They've got to be more disciplined. You've seen some stupid penalties on the field. That's going to be worked out. This will be a better team in the second half of the year. Third and four, Batch over the middle. Sloan wide open. Sloan still on his feet. Heck of an athletic move. David Sloan and the Lions have it at the Cincinnati five. A 27-yard run. And we all know how important the tight end is in the West Coast offense. Watch David Sloan coming off the line of scrimmage right here. Blitz, no linebacker coverage. Somebody, a safety miss, and look at that hop. Nice big bounce for the six foot six tight end. I didn't know he could get up that high. Certainly can. Very athletic move. First down and goal at the Cincinnati six. Here's Warren over the left side, looking to get around the corner. Down to the two, Spikes wrapping him up. So the Lions with the ball at the Cincinnati two, and a timeout has been called, an injured player on the field, it's Bernard Whittington. Let's go back to the demolition man. Watch Thurmer 30, Corey Schlesinger. Watch the contact inside. Bang, just takes a defensive back right out of the play, Artrell Hawkins. And Lamont Warren knows enough to follow his big fullback. Whittington down. And you talked about the West Coast offense. And basically, the West Coast offense is another name for the San Francisco 49ers offense. <laughs> See, I'm trying to be right. honest. Nobody wanted to give credit to Bill Walsh and the 49ers. So teams around the league started calling it the West Coast offense. See, there's a, there's a sly name to call it because it really is the 49ers offense. And you look around the league, you look at Mike Holmgren, you look at Mike Shanahan, you look at Marty Morningweg, there's John Gruden. All these people came from that system and run the West Coast offense, which is indeed the 49ers offense. And you talked about the tight end. You played tight end for the 49ers. 
And unlike the St. Louis Rams who go three and four and five wide receivers at times, the tight end was one of the most important positions in the offense. Very instrumental. Why? And, and you know what? Because you get mismatches. You get tight ends versus linebackers and your fullback versus linebackers and safeties. Those are the things that you like to do. That's why David Sloan is excited about playing in this offense. More opportunities, and that's the key. Opportunities. And Charlie Batch told us, hey, Johnny Morton, there's going to be some teams that double Johnny Morton, but there's other places I have to go. Corey Schlesinger, Number the tight end David Sloan, you've seen the fullback receiver. and the tight end make significant impact in this offense today. Lions could take the lead right here. Eighth play of the drive that started at the 40. Play action. Back to the back of the end zone. There's your tight end, and the Lions take the lead. We're talking about the tight end. Marty Morningweg hurt us, and Sloan picks up the touchdown. Marty knows when I'm around, you better get the ball to the tight end. And you know what the great thing is? This is great aggressive play calling. Play action, first down, wide open, open linebackers receiver. suck up, very aggressive, fast flow linebackers. David Sloan just going to the back corner. Huge target for Charlie Batch. And you're going for two, Gus. Want that three-point lead. Foster in motion out of the backfield. Here's back fire. And got it! Warren! And the Lions take a three-point lead. seconds remaining in the third quarter of play Detroit after an atrocious first half takes a 27 24 advantage and Matt Millett still sweating bullets up in the box and you've seen Charlie Bratt spread the ball around tight end fullback now Lamont Warren catching the ball out of the backfield that's the essence of the West Coast offense Someone will always be open. You just have to read it and figure out who it is. Marty Morningweg will take it. The Lions have been close the last couple of weeks. Losing to the Vikings. Losing last week to the Tennessee Titans, 27 to 24. And now with 34 seconds remaining here in the third quarter of play, they have the lead. David Sloan has two touchdowns, which is a career single game high. But the Bengals with so many weapons, Dylan, Scott, Warwick. Let's see, the Lions have struggled all afternoon on defense. So Hanson kicking off from the 30. Curtis Keith fields it at the four. And he goes down at the 16. Nicely done, Clint Crewalt with the special teams tackle. And you know when he really felt the momentum shift was that opening kickoff when Desmond Howard went rolling. That's really, in the second half, that's really when you started feeling like this Detroit team, and you mentioned it, they should have been down so much this first half. They were so atrocious, but they've come back. They've been aggressive here in the second half. There's Desmond, former Heisman Trophy winner in 1991 at Michigan. First and 10 from the 17. Kitna gives it to Corey Dillon over the right side. Dillon carries people with him to the 21. A four-yard pickup. Dillon, 16 carries, 134 yards. And that should take us to the end of the quarter. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Lions 27, the Bengals 24. We'll return to the Pontiac Superdome after this word from your local station. Lions coming up with 14 points in the third quarter to take a 27-24 lead. Cincinnati has the football at the 20. Here's the handoff to Corey Dillon. Dylan running over that right side, gang tackle. 
by the blue and silver. Gus Johnson along with Brent Jones. West Coast offense starting to work for the Lions. Also, the defense stiffening. Corey Dillon, first carry, 96 yards. Last 15, only 38. Yeah, this Lions defense is really tightened up versus Corey Dillon. They're going to have to have a big stand here in the first fourth quarter because this Bengals team continues to keep the ball on the ground. They're going to try to keep pounding at the Lions. And that's exactly if you're the Lions. They, Like I said, other than that first carry, they've done pretty darn good. So that's what they want. Third down and four. Underneath, ball caught. Nice catch by Dugans. Ball was thrown behind him. And Dugans somehow managed to haul it in in front of Jimmy Wyrick. And you're going to see Ron Dugans just coming to your screen, just running a spot route. Good job of knowing where that first down marker is. Gets right beyond it. Nice job extending those arms and getting the ball that's thrown away from you. Not the most accurate toss in that situation. You'd rather have it in your body, but they got the first down. Six-yard pickup. First and 10 for Cincinnati at their own 29. Play action, Kittner looking for the deep ball. Warwick makes the grab. Peter Warwick with the catch in traffic. Todd Light there to bring him down, but it's a gain of 19. And that was a big time catch, and the Cincinnati Bengals offense needs to do more of this. Play action first down. We've almost seen none of that today. Get those linebackers and safety sucking up. Here's the throw to. Warwick right into the seam, and you're going to see him take a shot right there. Nice job of concentrating on that ball. Warwick, four catches, 45 yards today. Bengals close to midfield. Ball spotted at their own 48. Kicked up to the sideline. Caught Scott trying to turn it up. He's wrestled down by Todd Light. three-yard gain you see Darnay Scott he's looking for that big sixer go ahead and make a little move on the corner and bolt down the sidelines but Todd Light does a nice job of hanging on to him right there and Darnay Scott's a playmaker he needs to have the ball in his hands more and we have this conservative style of offense Corey Dillon pounding at you all the time he should be able to get some balls out to a big play guys Darnay Scott is a big play guy in this league second and seven from the 49 they hand it off to Dillon, hopping through the hole, and Dillon keeps his feet churning, and it's about a yard short of the first down. Travis Kursky with the tackle after gain of six. You see a couple of successful passing plays, and then all of a sudden those running lanes are opened up for Corey Dillon. You can't just say, we're going to run, 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 run. You got to be able to make some plays in the passing game. The Bengals have these last few plays. All of a sudden, there's some creases inside. Third down and one from the 43 here at the Pontiac Silverdome. Last year of play for the Lions. They'll be moving downtown next season. The pitch to Dillon breaks it outside. First down, Corey Dillon. Out of bounds at the 40, at the 35. Now that's a gutsy call on third and one because your tailback is getting the ball five yard deep. Here's the toss. You're minus five right now. So penetration can kill you. All of a sudden, you see Corey burst into that line right there. And when he sees a hole, and maybe that's why they do it, because he has better vision with his ball, with the ball out there. But, man, still a dangerous call on third and one. But when you have Corey Dillon, it makes you look good an awful lot. So after 30 yards rushing last week against the Bears, he's doubled his season average 150 yards today. First and 10 from the Detroit 35. They clock winding down. They get it off. Kittner, Donnie Scott, and Scott all the way to the Lions 16. Kurt Schultz there with the tackle after a gain of 18. Darnay Scott is a big play wide receiver. He doesn't have enough catches. You see the deep seam right here. Comes inside, uses his body well, shields the defenders from the ball. John Kittner putting it right on the numbers, right where you need to have it. You know, and that sets up that slant go route, Gus, that we've seen here early on. Work the defenders inside, go back over the top. It gives you a lot more opportunities from the outside when you complete a play like that. First down and 10 from the line, 16. Here's the handoff going to Bennett, trying to get outside. He's ripped out of bounds by number 54, Barrett Green. Green has been nicked up today. And you have to give credit to this Bengals offensive unit that's really taken the momentum back away from the Detroit Lions, who really seem to have things going, and the crowd was rolling, and 
all of a sudden they're silent again. So for the Bengals, this is the tenth play of their drive. They've had the ball for five and a half minutes. It started at the 17, and Green is down once again. Third time today. Tough day at the office for the young man out of West Virginia University. 9.50 to go, fourth quarter. Lions up 27-24. Barrett Green has been battling an abdominal strain the entire game, so he's on the sideline, replaced by Scott Kowalkowski, 11th-year man out of Notre Dame. He wears number 52, second and six from the 12. Here's Kipna to the sideline. Complete. Kurt Schultz had a beat on the football. Corey Dillon, the intended receiver. Kurt Schultz did have a beat on the football. And one more step, he was going 90 yards the other way. Dangerous pass right there. A little telegraph going on. So that brings up third down and six from the 12. Cincinnati needs to go to the six-yard line for first down. You know, last time they were in this situation, they had Corey Dillon hit and released him on that little screen pass over the middle and scored a touchdown on it. Kitna looking, steps up, he's got a lead, wants to take it, and Kitna has the first down. Beautifully done by John Kitna, taking what the defense gives him. And a nice job this time of not sliding by quarterback John Kitna. He sees the hole, steps up. He knows he's going to have a chance to play some pinball. Tuck that ball away, ball security. You see it get banged around and lean forward and get that first down. <laughs> there he is, fired up. Saw that he had the first down. Little celebration going on. First down and goal from the five for the Bengals. Corey Dillon breaks it back, lowers his shoulder, and gets to the one. Barrett Green back into the game with the hit. And right now, if you're the Bengals, you're just going to give the ball to Corey Dillon. You saw him get four yards right there. Don't even try anything. Don't have a chance to have a blitz or a tip ball or anything. Just give the ball to Corey Dillon. He's getting the yards. It's been a very impressive drive for the offense. Just worn down the defense for the Detroit Lions. Bob Redkowski. Let's see if he hears you. So you don't think a little play action fake right here. And not now. Second and goal. Dillon straight ahead. Touchdown. Absolutely right. Third touchdown of the day for Corey Dillon. Two rushing, one receiving. And Cincinnati reclaims the lead 30 to 27. Go with your strength, especially late in the game. Take no chances. They haven't proven they could stop Corey Dillon in this drive. And you see him keep those legs driving. He's an amazing specimen. 155 yards rushing for Dillon. Three touchdowns. Neil Rackers in to attempt the extra point. It's up and good. So with 8.06 to go in the fourth, Cincinnati takes a 31-27 lead over the Lions on the back of Corey Dillon, one of the best in the National Football League. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by 1010-220. For great long-distance rates anywhere in America and around the world, dial 1010-220. Edge Clean Shaving Gel. It helps lift dirt and oil every time you shave. And by the Principal Financial Group, we understand what you're working for. The beautiful downtown Detroit skyline, highlighted by the Renaissance Center and the drive for Cincinnati. 13 plays, covering 83 yards. Corey Dillon, third touchdown of the day, a one-yarder. And Cincinnati refusing to let Desmond Howard hurt him. He picks it up at the 20. Here's Howard. And Desmond Howard stopped at the 35, a 16-yard return. So Charlie Batch trailing 31 to 27. to 31-27, Cincinnati, don't forget, coming up next, game two of our doubleheader. Oakland at Miami, and Philadelphia, rather, the big game. Here's Charlie Batch looking, finds Warren out of the backfield. Warren's 
squares his shoulders and gets down at the 40. A gain of four yards. Brings up second down and six. And what Charlie Batch and this Lions offense needs to do is just keep doing what they did that last drive. Hit the tight end, hit the fullback, let, get those linebackers safety sucking up, then maybe take a chance down downfield with Johnny Morton. Second down, six. Twins to the top of your screen. There's Pete Mitchell in motion. Batch looking, stepping, and it's incomplete. Foster the intended receiver, Mark Roman, on the coverage. And the fans wanted interference. And so did Larry Foster. Brings up third down and six. You know, Charlie Batch didn't have a whole lot of time to read that play. A lot of pressure coming from that defensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals. And this offensive group for the Lions has to figure out right now, we've got to block. We've got to give our quarterback time because we can move the ball on these guys if we give them a few seconds. Third down and six, Lions, four of eight on third down conversion. Johnny Morton in motion. Batch underneath incomplete. Off the fingertips of Morton, covered on the play by Hawkins. And Morton wanted a pass interference as well. And we're going to get Johnny Morton coming out of motion, takes an inside break. There's Hawkins touching him initially. He's got five yards, and Johnny Morton looking for that flag, but I don't know. I don't think there was P.I. there. Brings on John Jett. Only his third punt of the afternoon. Peter Warwick stands at the 23. Jett. Spiraling punt. Warwick sent back. Inside his own 10. Warwick outside. Can't get by Kurt Schultz. And finally wrapped up. Brock Olivo with the special teams tackle, 52-yard punt, 15-yard return. Dick LeBeau, 6.58 away from his fourth win. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. And by Nextel, how business gets done. Welcome back. Gus Johnson, Brent Jones with you. 6.58 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Cincinnati with a 31-27 lead over the Detroit Lions. It's been all Corey Dillon, 155 yards rushing, three touchdowns. John Kitna underneath finds Peter Warwick. Gets to the 30. Monday on CBS, spent Halloween with the King of Queens. It's an all-new episode. So funny, it's scary. Monday on CBS. 6.35 to play in the fourth. The Lions need the football back. Cincinnati wants to run the clock out, and they have the man to do it. The number 28, Corey Dillon. You said it all right there. This Lions defense is going to have to stop Corey Dillon in this series. Warwick in motion. Inside handoff, Lorenzo Neal looking for the first down. Dives forward, depends on the spot. He looks like he may be a little bit short. Yeah, I think he's going to be roughly uh, a foot and a half short, Gus, on that one. And third down, you've got to give the ball back to Corey Dillon. He has not lost two yards today. So brings up third down and one. Bengals need about a foot, as you mentioned. Maybe a little more. This is the time where you have a, you have a, a blitz, a run blitz. You've got to shoot the gaps with your linebackers, maybe a safety, and hope you can penetrate, knock those linemen back, maybe get a free in a, in a crease, and get Corey Dillon before he gets started, right when he gets the handoff, and hope for a loss. The other side of that, though, is you're bringing extra people, so if he breaks through that first line of defense, he's off to the races. Bengals call a timeout. Cincinnati with 515 to go this is a 30 second timeout now Saturday the Home Depot SEC football rocks the house of Tuscaloosa when Josh Reed and the LSU Tigers tangle with Tyler Watts in the Alabama Crimson Tide 
It all starts with Tip Rando and Spencer Tillman on college football today, Saturday, right here on CBS. So a big play coming up for the Lions defense. They need the ball back with 5.15 to go. The Detroit faithful high in the stands. As Cincinnati comes to the line of scrimmage, 8 of 12 on third down conversions. Remember, they got a big first down the last time they had the ball, running Corey Dillon outside. Here's the inside handoff. Neal, I don't think he got there. I don't think he got there. And not to take anything away from Lorenzo Neal, but Corey Dillon's the guy you give the ball to in that situation. And that's going to be awful close. I don't think he made it, depending on that spot. Officials time out. They'll bring out the chain. And you know you're always going to get penetration inside. Big Sean Rogers, 92, the rookie. Look at this get off. And you know what? It's going to be awful close, Gus. Marty has an idea. He says no. There's so many Lions players standing in the way of the spot. We can't even tell. Well, I think it might be one or two inches short, at least from my bird's eye view up here. Uh, more than that. A little more than that, about six inches. So what do you do? Do you go for it or do you kick it? Well, first thing you do is you go back on third down, you get the ball to Corey Dillon. <laughs> now you kick it. <laughs> we already had we already had the surprise Lorenzo Neal carry on second down. And so I don't think it's time to give the surprise Lorenzo Neal carry on third down. And like I said, nothing against Lorenzo Neal. Great blocking back. But Corey Dillon is the best running back in the National Football League right now. Second punt of the game for Nick Harris. And look who's back. Desmond Howard at the 20. You think they told Nick Harris to kick the ball out of bounds? Do you think he will? Easier said than done. That's right. Directional punting. Harris. He's going to give Howard a chance. Here's Desmond from the 16. Howard. Still running, gets up to the 35. Desmond Howard with a 16-yard return on a 47-yard punt. Tonight on 60 Minutes, did Saddam Hussein have a hand in the terror attack on the United States? Leslie Stahl reports from Saddam's Iraq. Tonight on 60 Minutes, followed by the new hit series, The Education of Max Bickford. Then, Tyne Daly stars in the CBS Sunday movie, The Wedding Dress. Tonight on CBS. So there they are in the stands. The Lions fans as the Lions take over at their own 35, down 31-27. Here's the handoff, Warren. Hopping. And he gets up to the 37. Once again, Jim Nance in New York with an update. All right, Gus, the Ravens were down 17-6 at the start of the quarter, but now they've taken the lead. This was reviewed over and over again. Nothing conclusive to change the call. A touchdown caught by Ismail. They say they failed on the two, but the Ravens lead with a minute 50 to go. Back to you. 38-year-old Randall Cunningham still getting out of the pocket and making things happen. Yeah, he is. And you saw that. He's still got that powerful arm. Second down, nine. Here's Batch stepping up, fires on the run, incomplete. Johnny Morton, the intended receiver on Trill Hawkins, covering along with Roman. And that brings up third down and nine from the 36. The Lions need to go to their own 45-yard line for first down. Is this four-down territory? Yeah, you know what? I think we're almost to the point now where it's four-down territory. And, and it's a gamble to kick the ball away, of course. You know, your defense hasn't been the most consistent part of your team, but you still do have three timeouts left. Detroit with three timeouts remaining. Cincinnati with two. They show blitz. Here comes the Bengals. Patch in trouble. Fires. Out of bounds. Yeah, and you know what, Gus? I take that back. I'm going to go ahead and punt the ball. And that's, you got to play the percentages. If it was third and two or three, I'd do it. It was depending on the yardage there, but you got a punt right here, and I think that's the right call. You still got timeout, but I'm just amazed that Charlie Batch can't go back and set his feet and throw a pass, and it's been happening all day. You got to give credit to the Bengals' defensive line. You know, Von Booker's been back there, Justin Smith, Oliver Gibson. 
you know, Renard Wilson, all the linebackers. But geez, you got to give your quarterback some time. Watch a fake right here. John Jett. Flag on the play. Bengals jump offside. One at the third. The opportunity slipping right out of bounds for Detroit. Flags on the play. Boy, and that, that characterizes this whole season for Detroit. Just can't get a bounce to go their way. So now, with the ball moved up five yards, it'll be fourth down and four. And the Lions have a decision to make. Kowalski, special teams ace and captain, making some decisions. Offside, 55 defense. We'll penalize five yards and re kick. Raynard Wilson. And let's go back to this fumble, and that ball's there. Fall on. Oh, he has it in his hands. Oh, man. Just hang on. So John Jett stays in the punt. Greenwald couldn't hold on. Fans booing the Lions. They wanted them to go for it. Yeah, and I still think this is the proper call. They need four yards for a first down. Here's Jett. Let's it go. Wobbly kick. Warwick back at the 12. Jitterbugging. Warwick tackle at the 24. Clint Greenwald with the special teams tackle, 47-yard punt, and a 10-yard return. Don't forget, coming up next, some of you will see the big game, Oakland at Philadelphia. Others will see Miami and Seattle, New England and Denver or Buffalo and San Diego. Bengals with the football, first down and 10 at their own 24. Lions with three timeouts to go. John Kittner lines up with Corey Dillon behind him. Dillon looking, no room at all. Porsche jumping on him, and the Lions call timeout with 314 to go. So Detroit. Timeout. Detroit. playing its final year here at the Pontiac Silverdome and they will move to downtown Detroit next season Ford Field their training facility will be in nearby Dearborn and here's a look at the construction which is underway and the Lions will also have an opportunity to host the Super Bowl in 2006 it'll be the first Super Bowl hosted in Detroit since the Joe Montana 49ers beat the Bengals in Super Bowl 16. And this is what it will look like once completed. Well, it looks so impressive, and it's great. The National Football League, every team that gets a new stadium seems to try to outdo the next team, and people are saying this is going to be the best new stadium. So the Lions have two timeouts remaining, plus the two-minute warning in which the clock will be stopped. Second down nine from the 25. Neal and Dillon in the backfield. The pitch to Dillon, getting outside. And Dillon goes down, flag on the play. On the far sideline, Allen Aldridge with the tackle. That stops the clock at 3.09. And it should be against Cincinnati, maybe a holding penalty. No? Uh, legal procedure. An illegal motion penalty against the Bengals. Illegal motion, excuse me. And these are the things that you can't have in crucial situations. I mean, you need a first down to basically put the game on ice. Illegal motion, number 81, offense. In motion toward the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined, third down. So Morningweg declines the penalty, brings up third down, Ron Dugans. The guilty Bengal, and that makes it third down and seven from the 27. Biggest play of the season for the Lions. 
Bengals need to go to their own 34 for a first down. Kitna out of the shotgun. He's hurt the Lions running the football. Here's John Kitna looking up top. It's incomplete. Detroit will get it back. And you know what, Gus? That's the first time all day this crowd's had an impact. You saw the communication at the line of scrimmage between Darnay Scott, John Kitna. Darnay Scott ran a square out at 10 yards, and Kitna thought he was turning it into a go route. 3 5 to go here in the fourth quarter of play. Cincinnati leads 31-27, and Mr. Dangerous is back deep. Desmond Howard at his own 25. You've got to punt it out of bounds. Harris. He's going to punt it right to Howard. Here's Desmond with the fair catch signal at the 24. A 48-yard punt. And that is a huge play by Harris. Nice punt by Harris. Very impressive. Good hang time. But really the key was Bo Jennings, who was on the practice squad for this Detroit Lions team a couple weeks ago, beating his man outside and forcing Desmond Howard into a fair catch. Charlie Batts trotting back onto the field. Detroit 0-5 on the season. They've been oh so close the last couple of weeks. 2.57 to play. Charlie Batch benched after the first game of the season for Ty Detmer. He reclaimed his job, and he's got to lead his team into the end zone. Here's Batch rolling out. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Ball juggled out of bounds. Scotty Anderson. And Charlie Batch throwing the ball late. And you got to have two feet in, Gus, and you have to have possession. You see Scotty not getting any feet in. And if I'm, if, you know, this is a classic case where you see teams go into their prevent defense and only rush three or four guys and, and beg off a little bit. This Bengals team has to keep coming after the Lions and Charlie Batch because they've been doing it all day. Now's not the time to get conservative. Keep your eye on Sloan. He's the tight end at the bottom of your screen. Slasinger. It's an interesting play calling right now by Morning Way. You know, it's not necessarily the play calling, and, and I, I know what you're saying, but I think really what it boils down to is Char they're blitzing. They're continuing to the zone blitz scheme, and Charlie Batch hasn't had practically any time all day. So he's going to either take a 10-yard sack or get rid of the ball. Sacked four times, hurried seven times, knocked down six times. Charlie 0 for his last six, third down and 10. At the 25, they need to go to the 35 for a first down. A gain of 22. And what a big time play by your quarterback, Charlie Batch, hanging in versus the rush. And I've been impressed with Foster. Watch him coming across on the shallow cross route. The ball's a little low because of that blitz. Nice job looking it back in. Get up field, get down field, get out of bounds. And look at Charlie Batch hanging in there. And you know what Charlie Batch is, Gus? And you know it. We've had him a couple times. He's a competitor. Yes, he is. He is a competitor. And I'm just so impressed with him, and he's been tough hanging in there today because he's taking some shots. First and 10 from the 47. Warren over the left side, wrapped up to Keo Spikes. Great penetration and a great tackle on the play. James Stewart, who has that bad ankle, out of the lineup and running back today for Detroit. Clock still running, 2-19 and counting. Lions back at the line of scrimmage. And you still have time. You still have the two minute warning. You don't have to force this play right now. Here's Batch to the sideline. Bad throw. And a penalty flag. This will go against Detroit. Wow. And that hurts your team. No, that's just plain stupidity. That is embarrassing. That's Aaron selfishness. Gibson. You know, you can't put yourself ahead of the team in a situation like this. And it's been dumb penalties all year for this Lions team that have kept him away from victories. I can't believe that. And Aaron Gibson will come out of the game right now. Darn right. He'll be lucky to be Personal on the team foul. after that one. Unnecessary roughness. After the play, number 71 offense will penalize 15 yards. And 
the down count. Third down. And here's Aaron Gibson blocking Renard Wilson. They've been getting pressure all day, and it's tough. It's frustration. And there he's down. And then he takes the free shot at him, taking that helmet gouge when the guy's on the on his back. And you know what, Matt? Why? Why do you do that? The guy's on the ground. He's, you're trying to win the game. Your whole team has had stupid penalties all year that have cost you games. Third down and 28 from the 29. They need to go to the 43-yard line for first down. Back over the middle. And intercepted. Intercepted. Williams. And the Lions shoot themselves in the foot once again. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. Silly penalties costing the Lions another game. Last week, they had two That's players two ejected. Warning. And with 1.56 to play, Cincinnati with the lead and the ball. Thirty-one twenty-seven, Cincinnati with the football. One fifty-six to play. Here's Corey Dillon following his block. Hits outside, down the sideline. Stutter step, still running down at the ten, and they say he stepped out of bounds at the fourteen. A twenty-yard gain. Aaron Gibson really sh hurting his team today with the senseless personal foul. Yeah that forced this long play. And you're going to even see Johnny Morton being wide open coming across the middle. Charlie Batch actually had time that time, just delivers it high and behind Morton. That would have been pretty close to a first down or within five yards, Gus. That's what happens when you get backed up. You have to take risk. And I'm just shocked the way this Lions team has played this year that, that Aaron Gibson would come in at the end of the game in the last five and do something that stupid. Now Bennett running the ball. Trying to stop him, he's down at the 12. Lions with two timeouts to go. And they called one of them. Timeout. Corey Detroit. Dillon. Number two. Eye-popping numbers. 178 yards rushing. Two touchdowns also and an eight-yard reception for a touchdown. 138 to play here in Pontiac. Bengals on their way to win number four. And don't forget, coming up next, one of the great matchups of the season as John Gruden travels his Oakland Raiders to his former team, the Philadelphia Eagles, where Donovan McDab shocked the entire state of New York, at least the New York City area, by beating the Giants last week with two minutes to go in the football game. Detroit has one timeout left. Second down and eight from the 12. Corey Dillon straight ahead, gobbled up. No gain on the play. Detroit burns its last timeout. Timeout, Detroit. For the Bengals. Number three. After today, the they will timeout. head into the bye week, followed by a trip to Jacksonville. Jacksonville losing to Baltimore today. 18-17, then Tennessee at home. They travel to Cleveland, a team in which they've beaten this year already. Tampa Bay, Jacksonville, the Jets, and the Ravens. So Coach LeBeau, off to a great start this year. If they win today, it'll be their best start since 1990. This is Dick LeBeau's first full season as the head coach in Cincinnati. Replaced Bruce Coslin. Ended up going four and nine last year. And Gus, Detroit will get the ball back if the Bengals don't get a first down. And the real challenge will be, do the Bengals try to kick a field goal and go up by seven and risk kicking off to Desmond Haller or just try to run a play on fourth down? They have kicked off to him very much. And Corey Dillon gets that first down. And that should do it. Corey Dillon straight up the gut. He might be a half yard short. And you may be right. I believe he is. And now I'd say you go for it on fourth down. Because going up by seven and getting the ball back, even if you squib kick it, you don't want to give this team a chance, field position, or the ball in the hands of Desmond Howard. But I think this time around, 
on fourth and short, they're going to know who to give the ball to. Who do you think? Uh, uh, how about Corey Dillon? Okay, let's see. Fourth down and short. They need about eight inches. Dillon receives. Dillon running. I don't know. I don't think he got it. He did not get it. And here we go. 42 seconds left. No timeouts. Here come the Lions offense. Well, I'm sure that the Lions receivers know one thing. Get out of bounds. That's right. We had that happen here. Jermaine Crowell. What do you run in a situation like this? Down 31-27. No timeouts. 42 seconds left. The ball at your own six. You're a West Coast offense guy. Well, if I, if I had the answer, I'd be making $3 million a year as a head coach. You're on your own. Well, give you us an go idea. 95 you yards. Answer. Okay, I'd move the quarterback. They've been getting pressure. you got to roll Charlie Batch out. Maybe make a play downfield, a comeback. you got to have something toward the sideline and let your receiver get the ball and get out of bounds. But Here. roll, you got, he's got to get out of pocket. Here comes the blitz. Batch fires to the sideline. Caught Desmond Howard. Crawls out of bounds. At the 29, Lions were in a similar situation a couple of weeks ago against Minnesota, driving down, no timeouts, but Jermaine Crowell didn't get out of bounds. The clock expired, and the Lions lost the football game. You've always got to force your momentum toward the sideline. Even if a guy tries to tap you, he's going to end up dragging you out of bounds, and you're going to be able to stop the clock. Down 31-27. Here's Batch out of the gun. Steps up in the pocket, rolling. Charlie Batch fires across his body, caught. Moore tackled, unable to get out of bounds. He's at the 44, and the Lions quickly get to the line of scrimmage after a gain of 14. Got to spike the ball. And they do. 17 seconds to go. You know, we've had a few games the last couple weeks where teams didn't hustle to the ball, wasted tons of time. At least Marty Morningwag in this offense for the Detroit Lions knows get your linemen up there, get down there, spike the ball. They saved themselves probably 10 or 12 seconds by hustling. So they probably got legitimately Gus two, maybe three plays left. We saw, we saw the comeback by Desmond Howard. How about a comeback and go? Because if you're the Bengals, you're thinking sidelines. You're going to have to give Charlie Batch a lot of time here. Desmond Howard lines up as the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Charlie Batch looking. Fires up top. Howard, he has a step. Broke it up at the last moment. Beautiful job by Roman. And a flag on the play. Holding against Detroit. I want to see that play again because Desmond Howard got by Mark Roman by three or four yards. Charlie Batch just didn't throw it far enough, but that had a chance to be a touchdown. The holding would have brought it back anyway, but how do you let the receiver get so far behind you? Wow. Jeff Backus is the left tackle, 76. And watch Desmond Howard, he's just going to run a go route, and Mark Roman just lets him go, stays in zone. The safeties don't get over. And watch when Charlie Batch steps up. Throw it now. There's nobody there. That's touchdown city. Second and 20, 10 seconds to play in regulation. Batch looks to the sideline. It is caught. They said he didn't get out. It's all over. And that is it. And you know what, Gus? You've got to get a replay from the booth right here. Last two minutes of the game. I guess the referee's right on there. The referees are walking off the field. Johnny Greer has the ball in his hands. I mean, I don't know how he calls that inbounds. He lands out of bounds. That's got to... They got to be reviewing that. I wouldn't be surprised to see him call everybody back out on the field. Another look. Going up high, talking about momentum. Bang. He was lands out, of out of bounds. Gets his feet in. 
and lands out of bounds. And that should have stopped the clock with two seconds left. Anderson was the catch. Nice tackle, but it was still out of bounds. And the Lions should have one more play. They should have one more play with five, with five seconds, seconds to go. And I can't understand, within the last two minutes of a game, the officials are supposed to automatically look at plays in the replay booth. And that is an obvious mistake. And they should have both teams back on the field right now running one more play. And you know what? I think that whether you step out of bounds or not is probably not reviewable. So what they're saying is this is not a reviewable play. The officials have called our uh, truck and said whether or not he gets out of bounds is not a reviewable play. So that's it. The Cincinnati Bengals improved to four and three on the season by defeating the Detroit Lions 31 to 27. The Lions fall to 0 and 6. Coming up next, game two of our doubleheader. Most of you will see the Raiders visiting the Eagles. Huge day for Corey Dillon. 27 carries, 184 yards rushing, three touchdowns. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.